So before I start the discussion for this meeting, let us just have a quick recap of what we have studied from the previous meeting or the previous discussion. So from the previous discussion, we have learned that superstructures uh, generally vary by support type. By support type, whether they are simply supported or continuous, they also vary with respect to design type. So they can be slab on grade, they can be an arch, they can be a truss type, etc. And they can also vary with respect to the material type or the material that has been used for the superstructure itself. They can be steel or concrete or timber or any other material. So those are the uh, general variation between one superstructure to the other. Obviously, there are a variety of combinations of the above mentioned uh, types. So for example, a designer could choose to use a slab on girder superstructure with either steel or concrete girders. The superstructure could be simply supported or continuous and so on. Okay, so, th so those are the general variation of a superstructure. That is what uh, differentiate one superstructure to the other. They can vary with respect to support type, material type, or the design type, or any combination thereof. Okay, so another thing, another thing that we have learned from the previous discussion are the, are the different types of uh, steel primary members. So uh, just like what I have mentioned from the previous discussion, the type of superstructure is generally dependent on the particular primary member that was used. Okay, so um, the, the, the name of the superstructure usually came from the, the primary member that was used for the construction of the superstructure itself. Okay, so we, we began the discussion with the steel primary members, which are a uh, uh, roll beam, a uh, roll beam with cover plate, plate girder, which is the type of steel primary member that is usually used in the in the industry nowadays, as well as the box girder, steel rigid uh, strut frame, large structures, etc. Okay, so those are the common types of steel primary members, which is usually the 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 basis of the name of the superstructure type itself. Okay, so other than steel primary members, we also have uh, concrete primary members, which are pre-stressed concrete girder, concrete box girder, concrete slab, uh, adjacent pre-stressed slab, concrete rigid frame, concrete strut frame, and concrete arch. Okay, so those are the common type of uh, concrete primary members and lastly the, the different types of timber primary members which are glue lamb timber or glued laminated timber stress laminated timber deck tressel truss etc okay so those are the the different types of primary members that we have discussed that, that we have discussed previously and we differentiated them with respect to the material that was used, either they are steel, concrete, or timber. Okay, so those are just primary members, and we all know that superstructure is composed of primary members, of uh, secondary members, as well as the deck and the uh, uh, wearing course. So we all what we also studied last meeting the different types of secondary members, which are the diaphragms, lateral bracing, and the portal and sway bracing. And lastly, the different types of deck, which are the non-composite and composite decks, cast in place concrete slab, full depth precast concrete panels, partial depth precast concrete panels, steel orthotropic plate, uh, steel grid, timber, uh, corrugated metal, and lastly, the fiber reinforced polymer or FRP, which is the newest technology used for the, the deck construction. Okay, so those are the 
the different uh, things that we have discussed uh, previously last meeting. So for today, our goal for this discussion for today are the following. So at the end of the discussion, the students will be able to, number one, calculate the different loads that must be anticipated in designing bridges, although we will actually not uh, calculate uh, the magnitude of the different loads, but we will just have a background of how to calculate those different loads that must be anticipated in designing bridges. And then after that, uh, you must be able to explain the principal methods in designing bridge elements. Number three, you must be able to recall the different internal forces induced by the application of loads in bridges. And lastly, you must be able to calculate the different factors used to distribute loads to bridge elements. Although again, we will actually not calculate anything here on this particular module. We will just be trying to uh, familiarize ourselves with a different way to calculate the different factors used to distribute loads to bridge elements. So this will be the, the goal for this uh, discussion for today. Okay. So without further ado, let's uh, address our first goal, which is for you to be able to uh, calculate the different loads that must be anticipated in designing bridges. So you can see here, I have actually, this is actually a model of a bridge. Actually, this is a somehow like concrete slab bridge lang kasi wala siyang ano eh. Wala siyang primary member. So, ano lang siya. Uh, uh, slab lang siya na may mga tier support dito. Yan. So, wala siyang primary member. You can see there, walang primary member. So, this is actually a model, analytical model of a bridge. So, this is actually came from the, the software CSI Bridge. So I, I hope sa project nyo, kahit pa paano nakita nyo how to do this. So may I just remind the, the project. Okay. So this is actually the analytical model of a bridge that a bridge engineer designs. So you can see here as the vehicles travel along the bridge, you can notice na nag ba yung kulay ng bridge? Actually, yung kulay na yun, it's actually a, a, uh, a way to show yung change of stress or change of forces that, uh, that are being experienced by the superstructure itself. So, makikita nyo dyan, kung nag man yung kulay ng no concrete slab or ng no deck, ibig sabihin lang yan, habang nagta-travel yung mga vehicle along the bridge, ibig sabihin lang, nag iba ba yung stresses na nararamdaman ng bridge depende sa location ng vehicle. So may kita mo dito, yan yung yung kulay is usually nandoon malapit sa location ng ano ng vehicle. Kung nasaan siya nandoon yung mas malaking stress. And then pag nawala na siya dun sa portion na yon, kunyari dito, medyo ma-unstress na siya, makawala na yung stress. Okay? So yung yung load, yung weight, actually yung load usually that is just a weight of the of the particular thing na in anticipate natin that will occupy the the structure that we will design. So yung load na inimpose ng mga vehicles na yan dito sa bridge natin that causes this stress, yung change in na uh, color na nakikita niyo dito. Yung mga loads na ina-apply ng mga vehicles na yan dito sa bridge natin na dinedesign or may na model. That is actually an important part of the design procedure. Okay, that is a very important part of uh, uh, any design procedure, not, not only on bridge design, but on uh, general design of structure itself. Okay, you can see here that the design of the bridge superstructure or any other structural elements for that matter is based on a set of loading conditions that the component or element must withstand based on number one, duration, whether they are permanent or temporary, based on direction, whether they are vertical or longitudinal, based on deformation, like concrete creep, thermal expansion, etc. 
based on effect, uh, whether it is shear or bending or torsion or etc. In general, the principal loading constraint that highway bridges are designed by is truck loading. Design loading caused by truck traffic. The standard design trucks are used by bridge engineers in modeling the performance and adequacy of their designs. Load values can be found in ASHTO LRFD 2012 Section 3 uh, Loads and Load Factors or DGCS Volume 5. So ito yung LRFD or DGCS Volume 5 2015 Section 10.2 Load and Load and Load Designation, which is this. So ito yung DGCS, ito yung LR, uh, ASH to LRFT. So just like what I'm saying a while ago, yung pag-design guys, the design of bridge or the general design procedure for that matter, the general design procedure of any structural elements, usually kaya tayo nagde-design is simply because there is a load, there is a loading condition that we usually anticipate that our structure will carry. Okay, so that's why we are designing our structure in such a way that the, the, the whole structure or each component or element must withstand the effect of those different loading conditions. So, yun yung pinaghahanda natin. That's why we are designing. Dapat yung structure natin, uh, kapag in-apply na, 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 in na siya ng loads, kinere niya na yung loads na in-anticipate natin na ikikere niya, dapat the whole structure or each element of the structure must withstand the effect of the load conditions itself or the, the, the themselves. Okay? So usually yung mga loading conditions na inanticipate natin na ikikerry ng structure natin is usually based on different uh, things like the duration. For example, the, the, the duration. What is the duration of the load that will be carried by our bridge? Is it permanent? Is it temporary? Kasi magkaiba yung effect ng permanent load sa temporary load. Okay? Magkaiba yung effect, effect ng tempora, uh, permanent load sa temporary load on our structure. Okay? So that's why we have to consider that as well. Whenever we are considering, the, we are, whenever we are considering loading conditions, dapat i-consider natin whether the load is permanent or temporary. And aside from that, dapat i-consider din natin yung direction ng load. Is the, ro is, is the load vertical, katulad nung load na ina-apply ng mga vehicles na dumadaan na to? Kasi di ba ang weight, ba? ang weight, yung bigat, alam naman natin, elementary pa lang, elementary pa lang ba? Or kahit high school, alam natin high school ang weight is usually uh, directed vertically downward towards the center of the earth. Di ba? Kasi nga ang weight, sabi nga, weight is actually the, the gravitational force exerted by the center of the earth or the earth itself to the different things on it, katulad ng, kunyari, ng tao or mga bagay, di ba? So, yung, yung mga bagay, mga tao, tsaka yung center ng earth or the earth itself, meron silang attraction. So, yung attraction na yun, yun yung tinatawag natin na weight. Okay, yan na. Ito yung weight. So, kung ito yung ano, kung ito yung, kung ito yung word, ito yung center niya, tapos ito ka, or anything na nandito, somewhere sa surface ng earth, Sabi ni uh, Newton's uh, Law of Gravitational Attraction, di ba? Uh, meron daw attraction yan, tsaka yung Earth itself, punta dun sa center of the Earth. So yung attraction daw na yan, yan ngayon tinatawag natin na weight. Yan, yan yung weight na tinatawag, yung gravitational attraction na yan. So that is always uh, directed towards the center of the Earth. Or kung titignan natin siya in a zoom view, ang weight palaging... Uh, vertical, uh, vertically downward in direction. So, yung application ng weight na yan sa structure natin, yung direction na yan, yung vertically downward application na yan, may effect yan sa, sa structure natin. Or should I say, may different effect yan sa structure natin sa effect ng isang force or load that is applied to the structure longitudinally. Ibig sabihin, along the, along the longitudinal axis of the, of the bridge. Kunyari pa ganito. So, yung load na to na, na in-apply sa bridge natin, yung effect niya sa structure natin is different sa effect nitong load na to that is applied vertically downward papunta sa structure natin, sa bridge natin. So, yung, yung direction ng mga loads, it's bit, they are very important. It's very important, important as well whenever we design 
structure whenever we anticipate loads. Kasi magkaiba yun know, magkaiba yung uh, effect ng loads na may magkaibang direction. Magkaiba yung effect ng load na applied vertically uh, or vertical sa isang load na applied longitudinally. Okay, so we have to consider that as well. Another thing na kinoconsider natin for loading condition na na i-withstand dapat ang structure natin ay yung mga deformation like yung mga concrete clip. For the case of concrete na superstructures, for the case of concrete bridges na, for the case of concrete bridge, uh, bridges, syempre wala namang concrete clip yung steel bridge kasi hindi naman siya concrete eh, in the first place, so steel siya. So, iba yung pinaghahandaan natin for steel bridges. Usually, ang pinaghahandaan na, naman natin doon, yung thermal expansion. Kasi as we all know, steel is usually uh, sensitive. Sensitive yan sa, ane, sa change, changes in temperature, as we all know. Diba? Ang steel, madali mag-react yan sa change in temperature. Tumas yung temperature, magre-react yan. Bumab yung temperature, magre-react yan. Although yung ibang material, ganun, ganun din naman. Ganun din naman. Kahit concrete naman, meron naman din siyang thermal expansion. Pero yun nga, with respect sa temperature, uh, matalas, still talaga yung sensitive. So yung concrete creep na yan, if you are familiar with creep, kung, kung alam nyo man yung creep, uh, kung hindi nyo alam, ito, i-recall ko na lang, i-refresh ko na lang kung ano ba yung creep. Kunyari, meron ka simply supported beam. Simply supported beam, like that, and then meron siyang kanikari na load, point load or concentrated load at mid-span. Okay. Pag in-apply mo yung load na yan, dito sa structure natin, sa beam natin, automatically, merong deflection yan. May deflection yan naman eh, na mararamdaman. Automatic yun. Automatic. So, may deflection yan. Ito. Yung mid-span, for example. Delta. Tawagin ko yan na delta. Yung deflection na yan, right after you apply the load, yan yung natawag natin na immediate deflection. Immediate. Ibig sabihin, agad-agad. Diba? Pagka-apply mo pa lang ng load, agad-agad may deflection agad na mararamdaman yung, ano, yung, yung, yung beam mo dito for this particular example. Although usually yung immediate deflection ay hindi naman sobrang laki. O to, syempre, case-to-case -case basis. Case-to-case -case basis din, depende kung ibang loading condition, pwede masyadong malaki yung immediate deflection. Okay. And then, uh, if you will apply the same load to this the same structure for a longer period of time, ibig sabihin, nung in-apply mo yung load, hindi mo siya tinanggal after several, say, several hours, several days, several months. Ibig sabihin lang nun, na-sustain. If ever yung beam natin resisted this load uh, for a longer period of time, meron yung additional deflection like this one. And then, iba yung kulay. May additional deflection na mararamdaman yung yung beam mo. Yan na. Kung hindi mo tatanggalin yung load na yan, there will be this additional deflection yan na mararamdaman yung, yung beam mo due to the sustained load na nire-resist niya for a longer period of time. Yan yung tinatawag natin na na creep. Tinatawag natin na creep. So yung creep na yan, usually ang meron yan, concrete eh. Yung mga concrete materials, usually yan yung nakaka-experience ng, ano, ng, ng creep. Although kahit naman still, may creep din naman. Pero madalas yan nakikita natin sa mga concrete ma na, na structures. Yung creep na yan, guys, dito sa simple supported beam natin, yung creep na yan, may effect yan. May effect yan sa, sa structural integrity nung, 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 nung structure natin, nung, nung beam natin for this particular case. So kung may effect yan, therefore, We have, to we have to consider that whenever we design the bridge, kung, kung bridge man to, for example, if this, is a, uh, if, this is a, if this is a beam of a concrete bridge, dapat i-consider natin yan, concrete creep na yan or simply creep because we know that deformation applied to the, to the structure itself ay may effect. Okay? So yung loads usually, iniisip nyo siguro ang loads. Pag sinabing loads, force, force lang siya or moment. So, hindi siya palaging pagsabing loads, sabihin natin agad ano siya, force or moment siya. Hindi siya ganun, guys. Anything that, 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 has if, anything that has an effect to the structure, we can consider them as a load. Yung deformation na yan, yun nga, yung concrete creep that is naturally being experienced by the, 
by the structure natin that is loaded by a sustained load. May effect yan sa structure natin. Therefore, kung may effect yan, we have to consider that as a load. So, you have to remember that, guys. Ha? Hindi pag sinabing load, agad-agad force, agad yon na kinikerry ng member natin. Or moment lang yun. Kanyari, may moment ka dyan. Hindi, hindi, hindi restricted ang term na load dyan sa force at sa moment na yan. Kasi sinabi natin load, it's uh we usually uh, define it as anything na that that has a, that has an effect dun sa structure natin na dinedesign just like yung thermal expansion if you are familiar with thermal expansion sabi ko nga usually na experience ng mga ng mga steel members or mga structure made up of uh, steel kasi di ba alam naman natin ang isang bagay pag nainitan tumaas yung temperature what will happen it will expand Pag bumaba yung temperature, lumamig, magko-contract siya. Katulad nung sa mga uh, railways, if you already seen a railway, paano ba itsura ng railway? Yung railless. Okay, yun. Wala yung ano kay cursor ko. Di ba yung railless, parang ganito yung itsura nun eh. Mga railless. Railless ng trend. Kaya rin ang LRT. Di ba may mga ganyan yun eh. Ganyan. Tapos may mga naka-perpendicular. Kung tinatawag natin na balas. Yan. So pag tinignan nyo yung mga relays guys, mapapansin nyo doon. Meron yung actually space. Which is this. Ito. Mapapansin nyo doon. If you will just look at rail railways closely, you can observe meron yung maliliit na space from one railway to the other. Yung tiyatawag natin na dugtungan, yung joint nila. Yung joint. Mapapansin nyo dun, yung mga dugtungan nila, may gap lagi yun. May gap like that. Yung gap na yan, hindi man sobrang laki, pero yung gap na yan is sufficiently enough. So, yung gap na nilalagay dyan is sufficiently enough to to control the thermal expansion of these steel members. Kasi steel yan, di ba yung mga railway? So, kasi kapag tumas ang temperature, especially sa Philippines, di ba? We are, we are a tropical country. Tumas ang temperature and tendency sa mga bagay-bagay, nag-expand. So, ang tendency dito, sa dalawang to, eto at saka to, pag nag-expand yan, when I, say, when I say expand, ganito yung mangyayari sa kanila. Ito yung zoom view lang ha. Zoom view na nung dugtungan. Pag nag-expand yan, ito haba. Haba yan, like that. And then ito haba. At then syempre. So pag, pag sobra-sobra yung paghaba nila, ang tendency dyan, magdidikit sila along here. Magdidikit yung member na to tsaka dito. With respect dito sa sa interface na to. Okay? Pag sobrang taas pa ng temperature, mag-expand pa to tsaka to. E ang problema, magkadikit na sila. So, ang tendency, gusto pa nilang humaba, mag-expand, pero hindi na sila makapag-expand kasi nga, they are already touching each other. Di ba? Hindi na sila makapag-expand kasi wala ng space. We are already, they are already touching each other. So, ang tendency doon, meron kasing mabubuo na stress. May mabubuong stress doon. Kasi, kunyari ito, pinipilit niya mag-expand pa, hindi na siya makapag-expand kasi nga may nakaharang na. So, ang tendency, parang ina-apply niya ng force ito. So, uh, kung may ina-apply siya na force, alam natin kung may force, mayroong stress. Diba? From the simple relationship of force and stress, we know that stress is just equal to force over area. Kung may force, malamang may stress. Okay? So, because of that force, uh, or should I say, because of that deformation, yung supposedly deformation na ina-apply or na-experience itong member na to, na hindi niya nga magawa, hindi siya makapag-deform, hindi siya makapag-expand because of the restriction itong kabilang member. Mayroong stress na nabubuo. Pag nagkaroon ng stress yan, malamang ang tendency for our material, magkakaroon yan ng mga uh, cracks, for example, magkakaroon ng deterioration yan kasi may stress eh. Diba? So yan yung scenario na iniiwasan natin for the case of railways. Ayaw natin mas stress yung mga members natin dyan for, for changes in temperature. That's why naglalagay tayo ng mga gap like that sa mga dugtungan nila. Nang sa ganun, if ever mag-expand sila, hindi sila magdidikit. Or kung magdikit man sila, hanggang doon na lang. 
hindi na sila mag-expert. So usually, chine-check din yan, hindi na-design din yan kapag nag-design ka ng mga railways like this. Okay? So, as I mentioned, sa pinapakita ko ngayon, nakita natin, may effect may effect yung thermal expansion, yung deformation na tinatawag sa sa mga structure na dinidesign natin. Okay? So, kung may effect siya, might as well, if ever we will design, dapat i-consider natin sila. Okay? So, may just repeat, when when you say load, hindi lang siya restricted sa mga forces but that are being carried by our structure, pwede mo rin siyang kunin sa mga deformation na nararamdaman ng structure natin. Kasi yung deformation, it can also induce stress. Okay? They, they, can, uh, they can also induce stresses, yung mga deformation. Ano pa, ano pa yung mga kinukonsider natin for, for loadings? Yung, yung effect yung particular effect ng load dun sa mismong structure element na dinedesign natin. Shear ba yung effect niya? Or bendy? Or torsion? For example, dito, yung load na na kinahari ng simple supported beam natin. Ano ba yung ano ba yung napoproduce or na-regenerate niya na, na forces, internal forces, inside the beam? Ano kaya yun? If you, if you can remember sa structural theory, when you apply the, when you apply the force, Ano yung nagiging effect niya sa sa loob ng beam natin? Ano yung nagigenerate niya? Di ba na kapag generate siya ng tinatawag natin na shear forces and bending moment? Okay? So yung shear forces and bending moment na yun, yun yung effect that this applied load generates in this particular beam example. So yung shear yung shear forces na yun, bending moment na yun, obviously they obviously they have an effect sa structure natin. Bending, it bends the, the beam. Shear, it tends to shear off one member, one segment to the, uh, relative to the other segment. Okay. So, yung mga yan, may effect sa structure natin. Might as well, consider natin. Consider natin whenever we design uh, uh, structures. Consider natin sila as part of the loading conditions. So, yan yung mga basis usually ng mga loading conditions that we anticipate, that we expect whenever we design bridges. So ang goal natin whenever we design is kumbaga to 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 proportion the the element or the component of our structure in such a way na mareresist nila tong lahat ng to. Mareresist nila yang mga yan. That is usually the goal of designing. You are you are proportioning a particular part of a whole structure in such a way that it can resist permanent or temporary loads, vertical, longitudinal, concrete creep, thermal expansion, shear, bending, torsion, etc. Okay? So, sa, sa case ng mga bridges na dinedesign, usually, ang principal loading constraint that we usually consider whenever we design bridges is yung mga tinatawag natin na truck loading. Ito. Usually, yan yung main load that we expect, that we anticipate na pinaghahandaan natin whenever we design bridges. Bakit? Eh, usually, yan naman yung dumadaan, di ba? Hindi naman sa usually yan talaga dumadaan. Pero once na dumaan yung truck loading na yan, once na may dumaan na truck sa, sa bridge mo, malaki yung effect niyan sa, sa, sa bridge itself. Okay? Malaki yung effect niyan. Bakit? Alam naman kasi natin, ang, ang truck mabigat with respect sa weight ang truck mabigat compare sa ordinary car or ordinary pedestrian na naglalakad sa isang bridge, di ba? So kung i-compare mo, meron kang meron kang pedestrian, meron kang uh, bicycle yung nagba-bike, meron kang car, meron kang truck. Kung i-compare mo silang apat uh, uh, aside from the other things na supposedly gagamit ng bridge na Kung i-compare mo yung apat na yan, pedestrian, yung mga tao naglalakad sa bridge, yung nagbabicycle, yung nagbabike, yung mga car na dumadaan, tsaka yung mga truck. If you will compare the four, obviously, sino may pinakamalaki effect sa structure with respect sa weight? Siyempre, yung truck. ba? Kasi yung truck yung pinakamabigat. With respect to weight, the truck uh, uh, is the heaviest uh, you, uh, user of the bridge that we usually design. Okay? So, kung siya yung pinakamabigat, if it is the heaviest, therefore, you can expect siya yung may pinakamalaking effect. May, siya yung may pinakamalaking effect sa, sa, sa bridge natin. Therefore, kung siya may pinakamalaking effect, eh, di siya na yung paghandaan natin. Di ba? Para, para alam natin na safe agad yung ano natin. 
yung yung bridge natin kasi if you just uh, think about it if your bridge can withstand the weight of a truck do you agree with me is it a uh, is it safe to assume na it can also already resist the weight of a pedestrian of a cyclist na nagbike or or simply a private car do you agree with me na if if the bridge can already resist the weight of a truck automatically it can already resist the weight of a pedestrian of a cyclist and a private car uh, that is a uh, traveling along the bridge obviously yes diba kasi with respect nga sa weight hindi mabigat na yung truck diba? that's why yung truck usually yung ginagamit natin na basis for designing bridges yung truck loading or yung truck traffic na tinatawag yung mga ma uh, amount or yung mismong truck na we are anticipating na magte travel along the bridge that we are designing that, that's why siguro if you if ever you all you already uh, experience using the CSI bridge siguro makikita niyo doon pag nag-apply ka ng load ang isa sa mga load na makikita mo is yung truck traffic or yung truck loading yung HL99 Kung, kung meron na sa inyo na ka experience doon na gumamit ng CSI bridge, malamang napansin nyo doon, merong load doon, yung tinatawag na rin na HL99. Kung, kung tamay na, alaala ko, 99 man yun. So, yung HL99 na yun, it's actually a truck. It's actually a truck loading. So, parang ganito yung dumadaan sa ano. Kumbaga, parang ano lang yan, code lang yan. Parang code lang yung ginamit na yung HL99. Yun lang yung dinawag sa mga truck na isa isang particular truck na may ganitong dimension may ganitong haba, may ganitong spacing ng mga wheels. So yung particular truck na yun, yun yung tinatawag natin na HL99. Usually yun yung ginagamit natin whenever we design bridges. We are we are using that particular truck with this size, with this distances of uh, wheels and axles. Na anticipate natin that we'll use our bridge. Okay? So kung nakagamit na kayo ng CSI bridge, familiar na kayo diyan malamang sa HL99. Later on, Pag-uusapan natin yan, yung HL99 na, 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 na truck loading. So usually yan yung nagiging basis natin whenever we design bridges, yung truck loading. Yan yung pinakapinaghahandaan natin na dapat uh, our bridge can withstand. Kasi nga, kung yung, yung truck loading na, na kaya nang i-withstand the bridge natin, we are, it is safe to assume na kaya niya re resist yung pedestrian, tsaka yung cyclist na dumadaan, tsaka yung simple, or simple car lang na dumadaan sa bridge natin. Okay. These standard design trucks are used by bridge engineers in modeling the performance and adequacy of their design. So just like, katulad nga nito, yung nakikita nyo dito. Uh, for a bridge engineer to know the performance or the, the, or the adequacy of the, its uh, or her, her or his design, para malaman niya yung performance or yung kung okay ba yung design niya, usually nagpapadaan tayo ng, ano, ng, ng mga trucks dyan sa, sa bridge na design natin. Okay, kumbaga sinasimulate natin yung real life scenario wherein trucks may kung wherein may dadaan talaga na trucks doon sa bridge na dine-design natin. Okay? So, kung ito yung actual, kung ito na yung actual scenario at may dumaan talaga ng mga trucks like this. Syempre, para masabi natin na okay yung performance ng bridge natin, okay yung design ng bridge natin. Dapat walang member, walang part dapat ng bridge natin that will fail. Okay? So, ganun dapat diba, sa Act 1. Kung may mga dadaan man na trucks like this, dapat walang part na itong bridge natin na mag-fail, na masisira, ma 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 mag-fracture, magra-rupture. Okay? So, yung scenario na yun, yung checking na yun na ginagawa. So, Siyempre, hindi natin magagawa sa Act 1. Diba? Although ginagawa yun, ginagawa rin yung, ano, yung, kumbaga, yung load checking, may ganong ginagawa sa Act 1. Pero yung, yung, kumbaga, yung strict talaga na monitoring ng bawat part ng, ano, ng, ng bridge natin para malaman natin ano yung nagiging effect sa kanya whenever a load like a truck uh, travel across it para malaman natin yun. usually ginagamit natin yung mga tinatawag natin na analytical model mga analytical model yan yung nakukuha natin from softwares like CSI bridge okay so in that way we are simulating real life scenario we are modeling the, the actual bridge using finite elements like this and when you when I say infinite element, uh, meron kang meron kang buong kunyari ito, 
mapapansin nyo dito, yung yung concrete slab natin, kung napapansin nyo, may mga parang rectangle, rectangle siya, di ba? Kapanyari, ito yung buong concrete slab. Tapos kung mapapansin nyo, meron siyang mga rectangle, rectangle. So, ang ginawa natin dyan, yung, yung slab, in order to analyze it, in order to properly analyze it or model it, we we discretize. We discretize the, the slab. When we say discretize, ang simple yung ibig sabihin lang ng discretization is yung whole area, hinati mo into smaller area. So, bakit mo siya hinati? Medyo may kinalaman yan sa analysis para mas madali yung analysis. Okay? Kaya that's why mapapansin nyo dito yung analytical model natin is actually composed of discrete elements na tinatawag. Yan, yung mga rectangle na yan. So, kaya ba yung mga ganyan? Kasi nga, para malaman natin, yung mismong mga stresses na nararamdaman dito sa portion na to, 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 etc. etc. So, in that way, malalaman natin yung performance ng bridge natin kapag kapag meron ng actual na track na dumaan sa kanya. And we can see na wala namang nag-fail na, na portion or the me, na, na member ng bridge natin for this particular ano na model. So that's that is how we we check the 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 performance or the 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 the, the, the adequacy of our design. Okay, we usually we use analytical model usually. And yung analytical model na yun, pinapadaanan natin ang mga track loading. Kasi yan yung pinaka kung basis natin for checking the adequacy of our bridge. Kung pag kaya niyang i-resist yung truck, malamang kaya niya na i-resist yung car, bike, at yung pedestrian. Okay? So yung mga loads that we anticipate that will be carried by our design, ah, but by, by our bridge, usually those values, yung mga values ng loads na yun, either compute we either we compute them depende kasi yan eh kung ano yung particular load na in anticipate natin so there are loads that we can actually compute and there are loads that we can just refer to the different standards or codes to to find their particular magnitude so usually yung mga loads yung mga magnitude niya and how to compute those particular loads can be found on codes like aash to lrft which is this okay so usually yung mga loads na yan, may mare, yung mga dead loads. Kuro naman as of this moment, we are particular particular or you already know dead loads, live loads, wind loads, etc. Siguro naman familiar kayo doon sa mga basic loads na yan. So you so yung mga magnitude noon on how to compute them or the particular magnitude. Usually we can find them sa mga codes like yung ash to LRFT. Okay, so for our for our course, we we refer to the Ash to LRFT 2012 version. Okay, so siguro na banggit ko narin before why we why we uh, prefer to refer to Ash to LRFT 2012 version. Although meron ng 2014 yata or 2017, basta meron ng ano. There is already a latest version na Ash to LRFT, but we rather uh, wanted to refer to the 2012 version simply because yun kasi yung reference ng uh, DGS, DGCS natin, Volume 5, which talks about bridge design. Yan yung corresponding or yung counterpart ng ASH to LRFT. Kumbaga, yan, ito yung local code natin, kumbaga yung DGCS, made by DPWH, Department of uh, Public Works and Highways. Okay, so if you will, if you want to find the particular provisions for uh, load related concerns you can just simply go to section 3 loads and load factors if you will refer to ash to lrft yeah. you can just move on move forward to section 3 loads and load factors if you want to find or if you have if you want to have an information about the design loads that is usually anticipated for designing bridges or you can rather uh, go to DGCS Volume 5, 2015, Section 10.2, Load and Load Designation. Okay, so kung titignan nyo naman yan, guys, as, although as you can see later, yung mga provisions that are written from uh, DGCS are actually similar to AASHTO. Uh, okay, simply because DGCS uh, adapted the provisions of AASHTO. Uh, okay. If you already attended some bridge seminars, 
uh, I, I, I think you are familiar with the uh, uh, Sir Cañete, Sir Albert Cañete. He is one of the people na nag ano, na nagawa nitong uh, DGCS Volume Five, Rich Design. Okay, and according to him, mayon nga sa Ashto tayo nagrefer. He uh, he adapted Ashto and RFT provisions. Okay. So that's why mapapansin niyo if you have a copy of DGCS saka ng Ashto similar halos similar halos similar yung mga provisions na meron sa dalawang to simply because our local code is actually patterned with the international code which is the Ashto LRFT okay so these two codes are the main reference that we will use in designing Bridges, especially for the design loads. Okay. So we are already talking about design loads or loads in general. So as I've mentioned a while ago, uh, there are actually different loads or different types of loads that we consider whenever we design bridges. And first on the list are the permanent loads. Permanent loads are uh, actually a general term. So meron pa kung bagang sub ano? sub loads dito. So permanent loads is just a general term. And uh, it actually pertains to those loads that always remain, that, that, that's the key word here to define permanent loads. Uh, permanent, load, permanent loads are those loads that always remain and act on a bridge throughout its life. That's why it's called permanent, diba? That's why it's called permanent, meaning it's just always there. It's just always there dyan sa, ano, sa, sa bridge natin. Hindi siya nawawala. Nandyan lang siya forever and ever. All throughout the life of the bridge. Okay? So anything that will always remain on the bridge itself will be classified as a permanent load. Simply because it's permanent with respect to position. Di ba? And magnitude. Di ba? Nandyan lang siya lagi sa, sa bridge natin. So that's the general term or general classification of, uh, I, or I mean, that's one of the general classification of loads, yung mga tiyantawag natin na permanent loads. So maraming permanent loads actually. Maraming permanent loads. So just so I'll just uh, mention here the major categories of permanent loads. Okay? So ito, this is a photo uh, that, uh, that you can see the some of the permanent loads that we that we incorporate in our bridge design. So the first on the list, first on the list of the permanent loads that we anticipate whenever we design bridges is the dead load. <coughs> so I believe you are already familiar with the the dead load, diba? Siguro familiar na kayo sa dead load. So I'll just focus for the definition of dead load with respect to bridge. Okay. So when we say dead load with respect to bridge, it is the aggregate weight of all superstructure elements, i.e. those elements above the bearings. So nasan yung bearings ito? If you, if you don't uh, see a bearing, ganito pa yung, ganito yung itsura ng bearing. Yan. Kung, kung naalala nyo dun sa discussion natin from module, from the previous modules. So, yun yung bearing, and then anything above the bearing, that is what we call superstructure. So, when we say dead load, with respect to superstructure, ah, when we say dead load, it, these are just, uh, this is just simply the total weight of all the superstructure elements. Okay? So, meaning, Kunin mo yung weight nitong primary member natin. Kunin mo yung weight ng deck natin. Kunin mo yung weight ng traffic barrier natin or ng bridge barrier natin and so on and so forth. Kunin mo yung weight, weight ng bearing force natin, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Kunin mo yung mga weight niyan, add up mo, sum them up. That is what we call dead load. Okay? So, this would include but not be limited to the deck, which is this. Ito yung deck na rin tawag. Yung wearing surface, yung nakapatong sa deck. Usually used for traffic para, para smooth yung, yung, yung 
pag uh, travel ng uh, traffic like cars or truck dito sa deck natin kasi pag hindi mo nilagyan ng wearing surface yung ano yung yung bridge natin yung deck natin minsan hindi smooth yung ano eh yung travel ng sasakyan especially with respect to the friction between the wheel and the deck itself so kailangan kasi natin magkaroon ng friction yung wheel yung gulong yung gulong ng ano ng sasakyan tsaka nung nung deck or nung mismo surface ng bridge kailangan mas malaki yung friction diyan nang sa ganun maging smooth yung travel ng ano ng sasakyan natin especially kapag nagbe-break siya kapag nag nag-stop siya kasi pag halos smooth yan walang friction between the wheel and the deck pag nag-stop to hindi siya makapag-stop agad alam niyo naman yan that's you know the basics the, the basic principle of friction di ba kung kung halos walang ano halos ha, kung halos smooth to edi walang friction between the wheel and the deck edi hindi mahirapan to minto mahirapan ang minto to eh ang problema diyan may kasalubong siyang ano may kasalubong siyang pedestrian for example dito may pedestrian diyan eh hindi siya mga mga preno agad kasi nga ang smooth ng deck mo eh ang smooth ng deck mo walang wearing surface so nung may nakasalubong siyang pedestrian diyan hindi siya makaintu agad ang nangyari nagkaroon pa ng accident nabangga niya pang pedestrian so hindi lahat ng makinis maganda di ba <laughs> hindi lahat ng makinis maganda guys minsan We, we prefer na magaspang. Minsan, we prefer na magaspang. Especially sa bridges. Diba? Mas, mas magaspang, mas okay. Diba? Kasi mas malaki yung friction. Mas malaki yung friction. Okay. So, yung mga deck na yan, yung mga wearing surface na yan, yung mga stay-in-place forms. When we say stay-in-place forms, ito yung mga forma na hindi na natin tiyatanggal. Okay. Usually, it, ang example nitong stay-in-place forms na to is na-discuss natin sa type of deck nung nakaraan, yung mga corrugate, uh, corrugated metal deck. Kung naalala nyo pa yung corrugated metal deck. Yung, yung ganito ay tsura. May mga ganyan. Sa mga bahay sa subdivision, mga, mga bahay doon, usually, yung mga second floor nila, makikita mo, yung pinakasiling niya, bakal. ba diba? Bakal yon Ang tawag doon yung corrugated metal deck, katulad nito Okay. So 'yan yung ano, yun, 'yan yung one of the sinasabi natin na stay in place forms. Kasi ang nangyayari diyan, <coughs> kunyari ito yung magiging forma nung second floor ng isang bahay. Uh, I-relate ko lang sa bahay ha, para relatable sa inyo. Kung 'yan yung pinaka-forma kumbaga nung second floor ng isang bahay para pag binuhusan siya ng concrete, yung second floor, it will form a floor. Pag binuhusan mo ng concrete 'yan, ang mangyayari ganito yung itsura. Yan. So, yan yung magiging floor ng second floor niya. So, yung, yung pinaka-forma na yan, yung, yung something that help to, to shape the, the, the slab of the second floor, usually hindi natin tiyatanggal yan. Hindi natin tiyatanggal yan. Kung baga, dyan na siya. Magiging part na siya ng second floor. Or ng floor itself. Okay? So, yan yung tiyatawag natin na stay in place forms. Sabi na, dyan na siya. Okay, iwan na natin siya dyan after natin magbuhos ng concrete. So, yung, yung weight niyan, usually, ginagamit din yan sa mga bridges. Magagamit din yan sa mga bridges. Just, just like yung pinakita ko last time, di ba? Yung mga different type of deck. Yung weight, yung weight niyan, yung weight ng mga deck na yan, in addition to the weight of the concrete, ito, uh, they, they, they comprise the dead load na binabanggit natin dito. So, kasali yung weight niyan ng mga stay in place forms na yan sa, sa dead load that we anticipate that will be resisted by our bridge. And then in addition to them, yung mga sidewalks. We also consider them as a dead load. Tulad nito, ito yung sidewalk oh, sa gilid. So dyan tumadaan yung mga pedestrian, mga tao. Mga railings like this. to railings, railings. Uh, we, we consider them as dead load. So bakit ba natin tinatawag na dead load yan? Yung mga railing na yan, yung mga parapet na yan. Kasi nga, permanent yan. Nandiyan na yan, eh, di ba? Nandiyan na yan throughout the life of the, the bridge. Hindi man natin tinatanggal yan. Di ba? So, nandiyan na yan throughout the life of the bridge. Therefore, it will be included on the permanent load, specifically the dead load. Okay? So, ano pa? Ano pa yung mga kinoconsider natin na dead load? Primary members, which are this, ito. Mga primary members na to. Yung weight niyan, 
yung bigat niyan that is also in, uh, categorized as dead load. Simply because nandiyan na yan throughout the life of the bridge as well as hindi naman nababago yung magnitude niya. Diba? Yung mga weight ng secondary members like yung mga bracing or connection plates na wala dito, hindi nyo makikita yung mga secondary members dito kasi nandito pa banda sa midspan. So yung mga weight nun, included din yun as uh, dead load, classified as dead load yun yan. Stiffeners, signing, utilities, etc. Dead load din yan. Lahat yan, dead load. Anything that is on the bridge that uh, that doesn't uh, change in magnitude and position, we consider them as dead load. Okay? Mga dead load yan, lahat ng mga nakikita nyo dyan. Nan, uh, uh, I believe na banggit na rin natin to sa, ano, sa, sa mga previous modules. Load factors are used to account for the uncertainty of the underlying loads. So, although later on pa naman to, pero I'll just give you an overview. Sa, sa pag-design kasi natin, guys, yung mga load na yan, yung mga bigat na mga members na yan that we consider as dead load, usually, we don't consider them as is whenever we design uh, bridge elements. Kung baga, kung ang na-compute natin na dead load, yung total weight ng mga members, for example, ay nasa 100 kilonewton, we don't anticipate a 100 kilonewton load na dadalhin ng bridge natin. Okay? Usually, ang ginagawa natin dyan, we multiply that magnitude of dead load that we have computed with respect to a load factor na tinatawag. Kunyari, we multiply that in a factor like 1.2. So, if I will multiply 100 by 1.2, the result will be equal to 120 kilonewton. And that is the magnitude of the load that I will consider whenever I design a bridge. Instead of, I, if, instead of considering 100 kilonewton, I'll consider a load of, or a dead load of 120 kilonewton. Okay? So, yung 1.2 na multiply ko sa dead load na compute natin, which is the total weight of the dead load that we can see here, that is what we call the load factor. Load factor yan na tinatawag yung 1.2 na yan. That is an example of load factor. And what are load factors? Why why do we multiply loads with a load factor? Simply because to account for the uncertainty of the underlying loads. So what is what is that uncertainty that we are talking about here? Kasi, tandaan nyo guys, uh, wala naman talagang saktong-saktong magnitude whenever we compute loads. Okay? Kahit i-compute natin yung mga weight nito, mga primary member, yung mga decks, mga railings, etc. etc. Even if we compute their corresponding weights to comprise the dead load, we are not 100% sure that is actually accurate. What I mean is, yung weight talaga nito, for example, nitong I-beam na to, na kunyari 100 kN. In actual, hindi naman talaga 100 kN yan. Diba? Do you agree with me? It's not actually 100 kN. Siguro mas mabigat pa yan. Bakit? Kasi usually whenever we compute that, ang ginagawa lang natin for computation of dead load or simply the weight of a member. Kapag ginagkocompute tayo ng weight ng isang member, we just usually use the relationship between a unit weight and the weight and the volume. Diba yan lang usually yung ginagamit natin whenever we compute weight. We, we just use the relationship that unit weight is just equal to weight over volume. So if we want to find the weight, we just have to multiply the unit weight by the volume or simply multiply by the, the the unit weight by the area and the length usually we express the volume in terms of the product of the cross sectional area and the length for prismatic members ha? so when we say prismatic members ito yung mga members na pare-parehas lang yung cross sectional area all throughout the length katulad nito nung pinapakita ko dito so prismatic yan so ito yung area na tinatawag natin yung a so, yung A na yan, yung sineshade ko, multiply mo sa length niya, makukuha mo yung volume. Multiply mo sa unit weight yun, makukuha mo yung weight netong member na to. Okay? So, yung weight na yun, that is what we call the dead load. That is what we consider as dead load. Ngayon, what, what I'm saying is, yung makukumpit mo dyan na weight is not actually 100% accurate that will represent the weight of the member. So, bakit? Kasi in the first place, you just computed there the, the, the weight of the concrete itself. Hindi mo kinonsider yung weight ng reinforcement. May reinforcement kasi yan, may bakal yan usually. 
may bakal pa yan sa loob eh. Di ba? And yung bakal, may weight din yun, di ba? So that is in addition to the to the the weight. Addition, more or less addition. Although kasi syempre, pag may bakal ka na nilagay dyan, it will occupy space. So mawawalan ng concrete doon sa part na yan. Kunyari, ganito. I beam. Kunyari, naglagay ka ng isang bakal dito. So may madadagdag na bakal, weight ng bakal, pero at the same time, may mawawalang weight ng concrete. Kasi nga, inopyo pa na ng steel. So, kumbaga, ano yan, additive deductive yung pagpot mo ng reinforcement sa sa member mo. Pero, more or less, uh, siguro additive yan. Kasi, we we all know that the weight of the steel is heavier or larger than the weight of the concrete. Okay? So, kung may nawala mang portion na to, kung may nawala mang ganyan concrete portion dito, may pumalit naman na steel na ganyan, kung i-compare ko, natin yung dalawang yan, sino mas mabigat yung steel na dadagdag or yung concrete na nawala, we can simply see na mas mabigat yung concrete. Kasi nga, di ba, ang concrete, 7,850 ang unit weight yan eh. While as concrete tole, sorry, steel. Ang steel, di ba, ang, ang unit weight niya, 7,850. Ang concrete, ang weight niya, ang unit weight niya, 2,4 lang. 2,4 kilogram per cubic meter. Di ba? Ibig sabihin, with the same volume, eto yung weight ng steel, eto yung weight ng concrete. So kung may nawala diyang concrete because steel is uh, occupied its space. So makikita mo mas malaki na dagdag. So ano yung pinapoint ko doon? Uh, there is actually no 100% computation of loads. Kumbaga palaging may uncertainty guys. There is always uncertainty. There is always uncertainty with respect to the magnitude of the load. Therefore, To account that uncertainty, whenever we design bridges, we usually multiply the load or the dead load or the load in general that we have computed with a certain factor which we call load factor. Okay, since uh, for the purpose of uh, accounting for the uncertainty of the magnitude of the load that we have computed. Okay, so that's the main purpose of the load factor. Baga to amplify. Most of the time, ang purpose ng load factor is to amplify the magnitude of baga palakihin. Palakihin siya. So, instead of 100 kN lang yung anticipate natin na dadalhin ng bridge natin, might as well, ang i-consider na lang natin, ang i-anticipate na lang natin, 120 kN. Mas malaki. Nang sa ganun, kahit na, kahit na maging 110 kN talaga yung weight sa actual, okay lang. Kasi ang napaghandaan natin, 120 nga eh. ba diba? What more yung 110 lang, ba diba? Kung ang totoong magiging weight sa sa actual is 110 kN, okay lang. Kasi napaghandaan nga natin up to 120 because we multiplied the dead load that we have computed with a certain factor called load factor. Which is again, uh, with the purpose of amplifying the load to account for uncertainty of the magnitude of the loads. Okay, so that's the, that's the purpose of load factors. Later on, we will talk about more about load factors. But I just gave you an overview about the load factors and what's, what, what are uh, its purpose. Okay, so uh, overall, that's, that is what we call the dead load. Dead load, anything that you can see on the bridge that is, uh, uh, that is uh, always there, always, uh, always have a the same magnitude and position. That is what we call dead load. Although, although uh, there are there is actually what we call superimposed dead loads that we will talk about more later. So that is actually a dead load as well. But we usually uh, separate it from the dead loads uh, simply because superimposed dead loads are those loads that are superimposed. Kumbaga pinatong lang doon sa bridge natin. So, usually, kina, ina, ano natin, sineseparate natin yun yung superimposed dead loads. Uh, simply because then, uh, magkaiba kasi yung load factor nila. So, later, we will talk about that. So, uh, talking about permanent loads or dead loads, uh, if you want to find uh, the, the particular magnitude of uh, dead loads for certain materials, you can just refer to uh, Ashto LRFT 2012 section 3.5 which uh, talking about permanent loads in general. But if you want to find uh, the ma particular magnitude of dead loads, you can just refer to section 3.5.1 because that particular provision, that particular section of the code, uh, 
talks about dead loads. Okay? Sa, sa ASHTO or even sa DGS, DGCS, when we, when we specify dead loads, we usually use the notation DC or DW or, or EV. So, pare-parehas dead loads yan. Okay? So, by the way, this is just a provision. This is actually an excerpt from the ASHTO LRFD 2012. So, might as well grab a copy of the the code itself. You can just go to the uh, website of ASHTO or just search in the internet. Manapin naman dyan. So, may kita nyo dito sa, sa, sa code natin sa ASHTO. Meron siyang dalawang column. Column na to. Tsaka yung column na to. I'll just give you an introduction about the code. So that medyo alam nyo kung paano basahin yung code. Yung code natin, yung ASHTO LRFD 2012. If you already seen a provision or an excerpt from the code itself, may dalawang column siya usually. Left column, tsaka right column. Yung left column, guys, that is actually the code itself. Yan yung mismo code. Diyan nakalagay yung mga specifications natin, how to compute dead load, etc. etc. And then, sa right, uh, sa, sa, tama, sa right portion niya, may kita nyo, merong mga nakalagay na ganito. Ang tawag dyan, guys, commentary. Commentary. Usually, yung commentary na yan, guys, hindi naman siya part talaga ng code, but Siyempre, naging part na rin siya ng, ano, ng code. Pero technically, hindi siya part ng code. Ibig sabihin, uh, hindi siya part ng mga requirements, etc. Et okay? Pero bakit merong commentary yung mga code natin? Especially yung ASH to. Or yung ibang code, ganito rin, may commentary rin siya. Yung ACI, meron din. Yung AISC, meron din commentary. Kaso lang nasa may likod na portion, sa back portion ng mismong code. Unlike sa AASHTO tsaka sa ACI, yung commentary is written side by side with the particular code provision, which is very good for me, ah. personal opinion. Uh, mas maganda yung ganong format na yung commentary katapat ng mismong code provision kasi para madali yung referencing para madali mo siyang makita. Unlike yung sa AASC, kung nakita nyo na yung sa AASC na 20 2005 na version. I don't know if the later later versions uh, already adapted this format. Pero yung ASC 2015 na code, yung commentary niya, nakaiwalay pa, nandun sa likod na portion. Ng, kung, baga, kung baga sa libro, nandun siya sa, lib, sa dulo. Sa, sa, sa dulong pages, sa dulong pages, kung baga. Unlike dito, sa ASHTO at sa ACI, side by side na sila, side by side. Just for me, uh, good siya. Okay. So ano ba yung commentary na yan? Siya part ng code, pero it usually provides additional information about the particular code provision that is uh, uh, it pertains. For example, dito, the, the code uh, is section 3.5.1, uh, which pertains to the dead loads. Okay? So, katapat niya dito is the same uh, section 3.5.1 then, pero may nakalagay na C. Ayun naman, mapapansin nyo may nakalagay na C. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, commentary lang siya. Commentary lang siya about this particular code provision, yung section 3.5.1. So, makikita nyo dito, pag binasa nyo siya, uh, it just provide additional uh, info information about this particular code provision, about dead loads. Okay, so, uh, basahin natin. Uh, table 3.5.1-1 provides traditional unit weights, the unit weight of granular materials depends upon the degree of compaction and water content. The unit weight of concrete is primarily affected by the unit weight of the aggregate, which varies by geographical location and increases with concrete compression strength. The unit weight of reinforced concrete is generally taken as 0 0.005 kilogram per cubic foot Greater than the unit weight of plain concrete, the values provided for wood include the weight of uh, mandatory preservatives, the weight of uh, ito, transit rails, etc. is to be used only for preliminary design. So, anong napansin natin dun sa mga statements uh, included for the commentary? So, ang napansin natin dyan, guys, uh, wala, hindi naman siya nag-specify ng requirement. But rather, it specifies an additional information about this particular code provision. Katulad nga niyan, parang uh, nag-share siya na 
na ang gamit nitong table na to is a uh, traditional unit weights sabi niya tapos nag-share din siya ng information that the unit weight of granular materials depend up, depends upon the degree of compaction and water content so SKN niya lang yun share niya lang di ba so as usually yan yung ginagawa ng commentary nagaano siya nagbibigay lang siya ng additional information about this particular code provision yung section 3.5.1 talking about net totes okay so kung kung magbabasa man kayo ng code guys especially ashto Ah, uh, ganyan yung siya babasahin. Ito talaga yung mismong code. Technically, you don't need to to look at this right part here, yung commentary kasi nga it's not actually part of the code. Hindi siya nag-specify ng requirement, but rather it just specifies additional information about the code provision. Okay? Pero very helpful 'yan, guys. Very helpful din 'yan, yung mga commentary na 'yan. Kasi sometimes there is a code requirement here na medyo mahirap unawain. May mga ganoon eh. May mga ganong particular code provision na makikita nyo. Pag binasa nyo siya, parang ano yun? Kumaintin niyan, what's that? What does that mean? Mga ganon. Especially may mga terms, for example, na binabangkit doon sa code provision na hindi mo alam anong ibig sabihin nun. Anong particular explanation about that. So sometimes, matakatagpo kayo ng ganong code provision. And the commentary is very useful to, to clearly understand the particular code provision. Okay, sometimes may mga ganong part dito ng code na yung commentary, nililinaw niya, kumbaga. It uh, clearly explains the, the, the purpose or the meaning of the code part, the, the particular code provision. Okay, kunyari may define dito sa code na define H is equal to ganito ganyan. Di mo alam ano yung ibig sabihin ng H. Dito sa commentary, biglang i-specify niya, H is this. It is the total depth of the primary member. Mga ganyan-ganyan. Okay? May mga ganyang ano dyan. Eksena kung baka. <laughs> May mga ganyang scenario dito that you will experience later on. Kung, kung magbabasa kayo ng code. May mga binabanggit dito na in-explain dito sa commentary ko. Ano yun. So very helpful guys na binabasa nyo rin yung commentary. I suggest if you will read the code, wag lang yung code provision yung basahin nyo. Basahin nyo rin yung commentary. Kasi useful yun. Very useful. Okay, so much for the explanation about the code. So, yun nga, alam nyo na kung paano basahin or tignan yung code. Ito yung code mismo, ito yung commentary. Technically, hindi kasama talaga sa code, pero provides additional knowledge lang. Okay, so going back to the dead load, going back to the dead load, we, we, we use or we can, we can refer to section 3.5.1 of ASH to LRFD 2012 if we want to, if we want to know about, if we want to know more about dead loads. Okay. So, basahin ko lang yung particular code provision na dead load shall include the weight of all components of the structure. Pakinggan nyo siya. Uh, notice how the, the, the statement is, uh, is uh, 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 written here. Dead load shell. Pansinin nyo yung word na shell. So, dyan yung makikita na it's actually a requirement from the code. Kung baga yung the tone of the code kung paano siya magsalita, is actually uh, like it requires. Di ba? It requires something. And that's the purpose of the code talaga. Di ba? It requires, uh, it, need, it needs to require something. Okay? Kaya mapapansin nyo, pag binasa nyo yung mga code provisions, guys, uh, para siyang naguutos. Simply because, uh, ang purpose ka ng code is to guide, to give you guidance, to, to, uh, to give you guidance and to instruct you to instruct you what to do. Okay? Kaya makikita nyo ganun yung mga tono ng mga code provisions dito. Sabi niya, dead load shall include the weight of all components of the structure. Okay? So pag sinabi niyang dead load shall include the weight of all uh, components of the structure, dapat talagang i-include mo yun. Lahat ng components ng mga, na, ng structure mo. Okay? As well as the appurtenances uh, and utilities attached there to Earth cover, wearing surface, future overlays, and land widenings, or overall, lahat talaga. As in lahat ng components ng, ng structure mo. It must comprise the, the dead load. Sabi ni code. Okay, sabi ni code yan. Kung baga, minimum requirement ni code yan. Usually yung code naman, guys, in-specify niya lang, yung minimum requirement. So when we say we minimum, sabihin lang nun, hindi ka pwedeng buwaba doon. Kasi yun ang minimum. Eh. Kung baga, kung ito yung minimum, yan yung minimum, dapat dito ka lang sa taas niya. 
either dito or more pa. Bawal kang bumaba pa dyan sa minimum na yan. And usually, yung mga code natin, guys, ay ASTO, ACI, ASC, usually, they specify minimum standards. Minimum, yung sabihin, yun na yung pinamababa. Okay, pinamababa na yun. So, hindi ka pwedeng bumaba dun sa minimum na yun. Pag sinabi niya, ang height dapat ng, ng beam ay, kunyari lang, ha? Pag sabi niya, ang height dapat ng beam ay greater than, uh, kunyari lang, ha? Uh, 30 inches. So, dapat, hindi ka bababa sa 30 inches. Hindi pwedeng 29 inches, 28 or 20. Dapat, 31 or more. 31 or more dapat. Okay? So, usually, ganun yung ginagawa ng, ano, ng code. It specifies minimum requirements. Minimum, ibig sabihin, hindi ka na dapat bababa na. Okay? So, dapat sundin mo talaga siya. Or higitan mo pa. Or higitan mo pa yung in-specify ni code. Okay? In the absence of more precise information, the unit weights specified in table table uh, 3.5.1-1 may be used for dead loads. So, if ever daw na you don't have any way to, to compute the, the dead load or the, the weight of the elements or components that comprise the structure, you can use the table 3.5.1-1, uh, yung mga unit weights na nandito. Okay? So, ano ba yung mga nandito sa table na to? So, yung table comprise of two columns. Ito yung materials, ito yung unit weight. So, dito sa material column, naka-specify, naka obviously, yung particular material that is usually used for, or uh, that is usually used as a component of a rich superstructure or structure in general. Kunyari, yung mga, kunyari, meron kang steel na ginamit dun sa, uh, sa structure mo. So, according to this table, the unit weight of steel is equal to 0 0.490, 0 0.490 watt, 0 0.490 watt. So, kung, kung isipin mo, anong, anong ba yung 0 0.49 na yun? 0 point, tama ba yung tiyoto ko? Baka tuwaglis ako, at di naman. 0 0.49, ano yung 0 0.49 na yun? 0 point 49 carabaos ba yan? Lagi kanya yung example ito. Ano ba yan? Carabaos ba yan? Or houses? Or whatever? Anong units niyan? Anong unit niyong 0.49 na yan? Para malaman mo kung ano yung unit na yung specify dito sa code. Ang gawin mo lang, tignan mo yung header niya dito. Kung baga, yan o. No? Tignan mo yung header. So nakalagay niya dyan, unit weight daw itong mga to, lahat na nakikita niya sa right column. Unit weight daw yan, na ang units ay KCF. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng KCF? Uh, kilogram, ah, kilogram talaga yun. Kips. <laughs> Naka-US pala ito. Ang ash to guys, uh, usually naka-US naman sila. US customary units. Siguro naman familiar kayo sa US customary units. Uh, ito yung mga ano, foot, foot, pound, seconds. Usually yan yung ano nila. Yung basic unit, foot, pound, seconds, or FPS. Sometimes US customary units is called, uh, FPS units. FPS. So, baka tinawag na FPS kasi nga, ang basic unit niya ay foot, pound, seconds. So, yung KCF, ang, big, eh, ang ibig sabihin nun, kips. Kips per cubic feet. Cubic feet. Ganyan ibig sabihin niya. Kips. Kips per, ibig sabihin nung C cubic. Tapos ito, feet. Ayan, ay, wala pa lang. Eh. Kips per cubic feet kips over cubic uh, feet cube. Okay? So, ibig sabihin lang yan, ang unit weight daw ng steel, steel that is uh, used here on the table is 0 0.49 kips per cubic feet. Okay? So, if ever you will compute that load of a steel member, kunyari meron kang, kunyari meron kang steel member dito, like that, an high beam, with an area equal to A and a length, may length siya, syempre may haba, yan. Yung, yung still uh, I-beam natin, may haba siyang ganyan. Kunyari, yung length niya is just L and you want to find the weight of this I-beam but to consider it as a dead load, kung sa mong computin yung weight niyan, you can, do, you can just simply use the relationship between unit weight and weight over volume. 
So just like what I mentioned a while ago, we know that weight is just equal to unit weight times volume or unit weight times area times N. If prismatic yung member mo. When we say prismatic, uh, uniform yung cross-sectional area niya or the, the length. Okay. So if you want to find the, length, uh, the weight of this particular beam, all you need to do is get its uh, unit weight, its uh, area, and then its length. Okay. Usually yung area tsaka length, even na. Ang hahanapin mo na lang dyan, yung unit weight. And where can you find the unit weight? You can use 3.5.1 dash 1 na according to the code, according to the ash. No? So you can use uh, 0 0.49. So kunyari, ang area niya is uh, uh, 100 square inches. And then ang length niya is uh, 50 inches. Okay. So mong kunin yung weight niya to consider it as a net load. So what you need to do is you just have to multiply, you just have to multiply the area and the length by the unit weight, which can be found on the table from the code, which is 0 0.49. And you just have to take note of the uh, consistency of units. Always naman yan, anything that you solve the but consistent yung units mo. So you have to realize na yung 0 0.5, ah, 0 0.49, that is actually keep per cubic feet. Keep per cubic feet yan. Okay? And ang mga units mo dito, inches squared, tsaka inches. So you have to convert them either to, to feet or ito yung i-convert mo to inches. As long as consistent yung units mo. Okay, so huwag nyo kakalimutan yun. It's very important that you have consistent units. When we say consi consistent units, dapat uh, makakancel out mo yung, ano nila, yung mga units na nandito sa computation. Okay, so technically guys, that is just how you compute net loads. You just have to compute for the weight of the, of the particular component of the structure. Okay, so this is the code provision that came from the AASHTO. We can also use the provision that came from DGCS, our local code, the counterpart of the of the international code. Uh, so this is the this is an excerpt from DGCS Volume 5, 2015, Section 10.6, which pertains to dead loads. And if you will try to compare, if you will try to compare the local code provision and the international code provision. You will you will see that the local code provision is actually uh, looks familiar with the international code provision simply because we have we just have adapted the code provision the international code provision we just adapt we just adapted the international code provision that's why don't uh, don't be surprised that whenever you look at our local code you can see similar code provision as the international code provision. Okay, actually word by word, pareha sila eh. Kung titignan nyo, ayan o. Dead load, dead load shall include the weight of all the components of the structure. So, ganun din yung nakalagay dito. Pertinences, utilities. So, pares na parehas. As in, pares na parehas yung mga words. Okay, ayan o. In the absence of more precise information, in the absence of more precise information. So, pares na parehas yung mga words. Ang pinagkaiba lang nila yung uh, section code, section number. Okay. Kaya ba lang nila is yung section number. Sa ano kasi, sa DGCS, meron pa siyang mga naunang chapters about something related to the design of bridge na wala sa ano, sa sa AASH to. Okay. Kaya medyo nag-iba yung ano nila, yung section na uh, section number, yung numbering ng mga section. Pero technically, yung content parehas lang naman. Even the content of the ano, of the table. Kung mapansin nyo yung content ng table, parehas lang din naman. Pero ang DGCS kasi guys, you have to you have to remember DGCS naka SI. Naka SI. Ang AASH to naka US. Although I, I think there is an SI version of AASH to question mark. Hindi ko lang, di ko lang sure ha. Pero I believe there is an there, there is an SI version of AASH to where in lahat ng mga units used in that particular code ay naka-SI. 
Usually naman may ganyan eh. Merong US version, merong SI version. Usually may mga ganyan na code. Especially sa ASH to. Sa ACI may ganyan eh. Uh, if you are familiar with the uh, ACI, yung American Concrete Institute, yung reference, reference code natin for concrete, yung uh, building code requirements nila, yung ACI 318, meron yan dalawang version, yung ACI 318, tsaka yung ACI 318M. So, pag pansinin nyo yung may M, yun yung naka-SI, kumbaga naka-metric siya, kaya may M. Yung walang M, wala nakalagay, yan yung naka-US. Okay, usually may dalawang version ng code na yan, naka-SI tsaka US. So, I believe yung ASH to meron din ganyan. Pero hindi ko pa kasi nakita yung SI version. So, kung nakita nyo yung SI version, uh, just tag me. <laughs> tag nyo na lang ako kung nakita nyo yung SI version. Para meron din akong copy. Okay. So, yung DGCS, naka-SI yan. Naka-SI. So, ano ba yung pinagkaya ba ng SI sa, uni, sa US? So, sabi ko nga kanina, yung US naka-FPS, foot, pound, foot, pound, seconds. Yung SI, naka, ano yung basic unit sa SI, nalimutan ko na. Uh, unit force niya, naka newton. Ang unit of length niya, meter. Unit of uh, 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 time, uh, seconds. Pares na. Newton, uh, meter, newton, tsaka seconds. Tapos, ang uh, unit of mass niya dito, kilogram. Dito, ang unit of mass niya, slugs. Yan. So, yan yung mga pinagkaiba. Uh, I believe medyo familiar naman kayo dito, guys. I hope, uh, I hope you are familiar with the uh, different system of units. Okay? I hope. So, yung DGCS, expect mo yung mga new units that are used here sa DGCS na kay SI. Sabihin mga nakameter, newton, seconds, kilogram, etc. Okay. Kaya pansinin niyo yung nakalagay dito na 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 unit weight or density. So makikita mo density na lang yung nilagay niya dito. Dito kasi naka unit weight. Unit weight, density, okay lang naman 'yan. It's okay na usually uh, we usually use nga unit weight at density interchangeably, di ba? Kumpara pinagpapalit. We usually use synonymously unit weight with density and vice versa. Vice versa simply because Uh, we can we can already get the, the one quantity from the other quantity because we 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 know the relationship between unit weight and density. I hope you know the relationship between unit weight and the density. So if you don't know the relationship between unit weight and density, uh, just refresh your mind. Unit unit weight is just equal to density times gravitational acceleration g. Okay. So meaning if you know the if you know the density. It's safe to say that you already know the unit weight as well. Kasi nga, you just have to multiply the density with the gravitational acceleration. 32.2 feet per cubic uh, second. Ah, tama ba? Tama. Uh, 32.2 feet per second cube. If naka-US ka. Tapos, uh, 9.81 meter per ah, uh, second cube tuloy. Square lang pala yun. 32.2 feet per second squared pag US. Pag SI, 9.81 meter per second squared. Yan. So, yan yung G. If you want to find unit weight and you already know the density, all you need to do is multiply it by the gravitational acceleration. Either 32.2 or 9.81. Okay? And vice versa. If you know the unit weight and you want to find the density, all you need to do is divide it by G. Okay? So, meaning... If you, if you already know one quantity, you can already get the other quantity. That's why we usually use unit weight and density inter interchangeably. Diba? Kasi we already know the relationship between them. So dito sa DGCS, ang, ang naka-specify sa kanya, the values dito ay yung kilogram per cubic meter. Okay? So yung steel niya dito, naka-specify siya as 7850. And what is that 7850? That is 7850 kilogram per cubic meter. Okay. So, yan yung ibig sabihin nung nasa table natin na doon. So, those are the particular code provisions pertaining to dead loads. Pertaining to the computations of dead loads. Okay. So, just like what I mentioned a while ago, Uh, there is this what the, what what we call uh, superimposed dead load, which is still a dead load. 
as the name suggests, superimposed dead load, this is still a dead load. But the main difference between superimposed dead load and the dead load that we are pertaining a while ago is that the dead load that we are pertaining a while ago is usually pertaining to self-weight. Okay? So when we say dead load, usually we pertain to self-weight. Yung mismong weight ng member itself. Yung sarili niyang bigat. That is what we usually meant when we say dead load. Okay? Yung mismong bigat nung part ng structure. Kunyari, yung mismong bigat ng deck, yung, yung mismong bigat ng mga superstructure, or kahit yung substructure, yung mga mismong bigat nila, yung self-weight na tinatawag nila, that is usually what we call dead load. Or, okay? So, anything na ipinatong mo lang dyan, anything na ipinatong mo lang dyan sa mga members na yan, that is what we call superimpose. Superimpose, ibig sabihin, nakapatong lang. Okay? So, when we say superimpose dead load, so what, what we meant here is uh, those are loads or those are dead loads placed on the superstructure after the deck has cured. Or, or in simple words, superimposed dead load are those loads that are just imposed or pinatong mo lang dito sa structure mo. Okay? So, paano ka ba makakabagpatong dyan sa structure mo? Siyempre, kapag na, na, nag-cure na yung deck mo. Diba? Dun, dun, mo na, dun mo lang naman kasi mapapatong yung mga bagay-bagay, diba? Sa, sa bridge mo, dun sa, sa deck. So, hindi ka makakapagpatong ng anything dyan sa bridge mo. Not unless yung deck mo, eto yung deck mo na to, ay nag-cure na, tumigas na. Okay? Siyempre, pag hindi pa tumitigas yan, basa-basa pa. Hindi ka pa makakapagpatong ng mga loads-loads dyan. Diba? So, usually, yung mga loads na ipapatong natin sa bridge natin, sa deck natin, after the deck has cured, yung tiyatawag, tiyatawag natin yun na superimposed dead load. If it is a dead load, ah. Kasi meron ding superimposed live load or simply light load. And, and although yung mga live load naman, generally, superimposed naman talaga. Diba? That's why we don't, we don't uh, include anymore the, the word superimposed when we specify live load. Kasi matik naman yun, ang live load, superimposed naman talaga. Ipinatong lang naman sa ano talaga yun, sa, sa bridge natin. Kasi wala ka naman makikita ang live load na parte talaga ng structure. Diba? May nakita ka bang live load na parte ng structure? Siguro may ganun lang, if ever, meron kang, kunyari, tao. May tao ka na nasama dito sa buhos ng concrete deck. Kunyari, ganyan, no? <laughs> kunyari, binuhusan mo yung concrete deck. Tapos, may tao na nasama. That, that, that's the time na masasabi mo na yung live load is included dun sa, ano, sa, sa structure itself. Pero, syempre, that's impossible, diba? <laughs> that's impossible. Diba? Palaging yung tao... Kunyari lang tao. Palagi yung tao nasa, tuk, nasa, sa, nasa taas ng deck. Wala siya sa mismong deck. Nasa taas siya. So meaning, lahat ng tao or life load in general, superimpose. Kung baga, matik na yon Matik na superimpose. Matik na ipinatong lang natin yung mga life load sa, ano, sa, sa deck natin. Kaya hindi natin nilalagyan ng superimpose na word yung life load. Life load na lang. Kasi matik naman, superimpose naman talaga. Pinatong lang naman talaga yun. Di ba? Okay, so yun yung mga super, superimposed dead load na sinasabi, sinasabi natin. Dead loads na pinatong lang dun sa, sa deck after the deck has cured. Okay, from the, el, from the list of elements above, the designer would separate items such as sidewalks, railings, parapets, signing, utilities, and the wearing surface. Simply because itong mga bagay na to guys, but natin sineseparate to usually yung mga items like sidewalks, uh, railings, parapet signing, utilities, and wearing surface. But natin sinaseparate yan from the rest of the dead loads. Simply because, yung mga bagay na yan, guys, uh, kumbaga, ipinatong mo lang yan sa bridge natin. Ibig sabihin, nung nagawa na yung bridge mo, tsaka mo lang nilagay yung sidewalk, yung railings, yung parapet signing, utilities, and wearing surface. Okay? Hindi mo naman pinatong yan dun sa bridge nung ginagawa pa lang yung bridge. ba? Nung binubuusan pa lang yung deck. Di mo, pa, di mo naman malalagay yung, yung, uh, yung wearing surface Di ba, ganito yung tura ng wearing surface. Di mo na malalagay yung wearing surface na yan kung wala pa tong deck. Di ba? Kasi pinapatong lang naman yung wearing surface sa deck, di ba? So, yung, yung, yung nakapatong na yan na wearing surface, that's actually included sa, sa superimposed dead load that identify natin dito. Okay? So, simply because, hindi naman siya parte talaga ng, super, uh, ng structure itself. Kundi, 
pinatong lang siya. Pinatong lang siya. So anything na pinatong lang sa bridge natin that uh, na dead load, we usually classify them as superimposed dead load. Okay? So yung mga sidewalks, yung mga weight ng sidewalk, ng railings, parapet signing, utilities, and uh, wearing surface, usually we, se we compute them separately. We compute this separately usually. And we call them SDL, superimposed dead loads. Simply because ipinatong nga sila lang sa bridge natin. Tsaka, ang main reason talaga dyan, guys, why we separate superimposed dead load for the case of bridge design, ha, is kasi iba yung load factor for superimposed dead load sa, sa load factor for dead loads or self-weight. Okay? Iba yung load factor for SDL. Kunyari, ang load factor sa kanya is uh, 1.1. Sa dead load sa self-weight, ang load factor is 1.2, mga ganyan. So, magkaiba sila ng load factor. So, hindi mo sila pwede pagsamahin. Okay? Kasi pag pinagsama mo sila as one, as dead load lang, tapos minultiply mo ng 1.2 parehas. So, parang may mali. Kasi, ba? kasi ang load factor lang dapat for SDL ay 1, ay 1 point lang. 1.1 lang dapat. Kunyari, kunyari lang, example lang. Okay? Kung, kung, pag, kung pagsamahin mo yung SDL tsaka yung, yung DL, ganyan. SDL plus DL tas multiply mo sila, sila as a whole sa load factor for dead load which is 1.2 may mali kasi nga ang load factor for SDL lang dapat supposedly is 1.1 pag ganito yung ginawa mo edi ang mangyayari diyan yung dead load mo multiply mo sa 1.2 as well as the SDL which is incorrect kasi nga magkaiba yung load factor magkaiba yung degree of uncertainty with respect sa dead load tsaka sa superimposed dead load. So therefore, magkaiba yung load factor nila. Later on, makikita nyo yung mismong magnitude ng load factor that is being used for SDL and for DL. Okay? So much for dead load. Uh, let's now move on to the next major category of permanent load, which, which are the pressures. So, ano ba yung pressures na yan na sinasabi natin? Pressures due to earth or water are also considered permanent loads. Okay? So, aside from the dead loads that we have discussed a while ago, the, the pressures due to earth or water are also considered as permanent loads. Simply because, hindi man sila part ng bridge natin. Hindi man sila part ng bridge uh, as a whole natin. Uh, ang nangyayari, throughout the life of the bridge, existing pa rin naman, existing naman sila na nakaka-affect doon sa bridge natin. Kung baga, throughout the life of the bridge, yung earth tsaka water imposed to the to the bridge itself throughout its life, may affect siya consistently. Katulad nito, uh, let's say we have here, uh, this is actually a retaining wall na some, somehow para siyang abutment. Pero this is actually a retaining wall. Kung nakikita nyo na ito, kung nakikita na kayo ng retaining wall, ganito yung itsura ng retaining wall. So, ang purpose ng retaining wall, syempre, from the term itself, to retain. To retain what? Either soil or water. Okay? So, dalawa yung purpose niya. Retain ng, retain, ang purpose ng retaining wall, either to retain soil, lupa, or water. Pero most of the time, retaining wall is used to retain soil. Okay, so what you are seeing here is a retaining wall that retains soil. Ito, Pinip kumbaga pinipigilan niya yung soil na mag, ano, tumabot, kumbaga tumabot dito sa portion na to. Okay, so kung, kung pinipigilan ng retaining wall yung, yung soil to, to, to flow, flow, ta flow talaga yun, to go to, to this particular area. So therefore, you can imagine, merong pressure, may force or pressure na in-exert yung, yung soil dito sa retaining wall natin or sa structure natin. Okay? So therefore, we have, we have to consider as well that pressure that is being imposed to the structure by the earth or by the soil. If ever soil yung nire-retain nire na. Kung water, same effect din naman. Meron din ganitong effect yung, yung water dun sa retaining wall. So therefore, we have to consider that as well. Okay? And that effect is actually permanent in nature. Diba? Permanent in nature yan. Kasi all throughout the life of the retaining wall, nandyan lang naman yung soil na nire-retain niya. 
So, ibig sabihin lang nun, the pressure that is being exerted by the soil or the water by to the rotating wall is actually an example of permanent load. Permanent load din siya kasi nga, nandiyan na siya throughout the life of the retaining wall. Okay? So, we have to consider that as well, yung mga pressures na tinatawag. Okay? While these loads primarily affect substructure elements, they have the potential of impacting superstructure elements as well at points where these two components interface, e.g. rigid frame or arch structures. So, yung effect ng pressures, guys, sa design ng bridge, usually, kinoconsider natin yan whenever we design substructure instead of superstructure. Although this module is, is focusing on superstructure, not, but, not on substructure, but we we already we already uh discussed the 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 pressure that is usually uh accounted for to the design of the substructure simply because yung mga pressures na to like yung earth tsaka yung water usually ang naka ang, ang ang part ng bridge kung saan naapektuhan ng earth tsaka water usually ay yung substructure simply because hindi naman na na, na, na naapektuhan ng earth or water yung mga superstructure di ba kasi kung kung imaginein mo yung ano yung bridge ito yung superstructure ito yung substructure niya yung supporting part so nasaan ba usually yung yung earth or yung water. 'Di ba? Usually nandito lang naman eh. Nandito sa portion ng ano eh, ng substructure. Nandiyan ah. Nandiyan yung nandito yung earth. Diyan yung earth, may soil diyan. O kaya ito may water kunyari dito. So merong merong pressure na na, na exert yung water diyan. So usually yung naaapektuhan ng earth, earth pressure tsaka water pressure ay yung substructure naman. Yung substructure lang naman. Hindi naman niya naapektuhan usually yung ano, yung superstructure, di ba? Kasi wala naman, hindi naman naabot diyan yung ano, yung earth eh, or yung water, di ba? Yung earth pressure tsaka water pressure. So hindi niya usually naapektuhan naapektuhan yung superstructure elements bagkus yung substructure elements. Pero sa at some point, may effect pa rin kahit pa paano yung earth pressure tsaka water pressure sa superstructure dun sa interface nilang dalawa dito. So diyan nagkakaroon ng effect So, indirect naman yan. Indirect effect yan ng earth or water pressure sa, sub, sa superstructure. So, may effect yung earth at water pressure sa, sub, sa superstructure dito sa point of uh, connection or interface ng superstructure at ng substructure. Okay. So, since may effect yan yung earth at water pressure, you have to consider that as a load whenever we design a bridge or an element of a bridge. Okay. Just like an, an abutment. Ito yung can treat this an abutment. Parang ganito yung abutment eh. Ang nangyari lang, uh, nandito yung ano, yung superstructure. Yan, uh, nakapatong dito yung superstructure. Ito yung abutment, tapos ito yung superstructure. Diyan dumadaan yung mga vehicles. So, parang ganyan yung tura ng abutment. Abutment, hindi lang siya nagsusupport ng load galing sa superstructure. Bagkos, nag, nag, ano, in addition to the load uh, imposed by the superstructure to the abutment, in addition to that, meron din siyang nare-resist. Usually, na earth pressure or water pressure kung may kung may water pa to or or a combination or a combination of a uh, soil or earth tsaka water pressure kasi pwedeng earth lang yung nire-restrain ng abutment or pwedeng water lang yung nire-restrain niya or combination nila kasi pwedeng may earth diyan tapos meron pa siyang tubig dito dito sa portion na to so in addition to the earth pressure meron pa siyang nire-resist na water pressure just like what you have studied sa ge geotechnical engineering kung naalala niyo man Okay. So, mapapansin nyo dito, yung retaining wall, meron siyang tinatawag natin na mga drain holes or drainage, uh, ano to? Drainage, hindi ko mabasa, mali. Drainage tile or tire. Okay, ito, may mga butas-butas dito. Pansin niyo may mga, yung, pas, pansin niyo yung mga retaining wall, may mga butas-butas na ganyan. Uh, ganyan. So, ano yung purpose niyan? Ba't nilalagyan natin ng mga butas usually yung mga retaining wall? This is actually, ano, ano lang ah. Uh, ano lang to guys, additional information for you. Mabanggit ko lang para para alam niyo rin. Ito pansinin niyo yung mga retaining wall may mga butas diyan oh. Na ganyan. So ba't ba natin nilalagay ng butas yung mga retaining no, retaining wall usually. Simply because if ever hindi magano, hindi siya mag-store ng tubig dito sa sa soil na nire-retain niya. Okay? Kasi kunyari umulan 
umulan. Siyempre may yung yung tubig, dediretso sa soil, ma-absorb ng soil yan. Tendency kasi diyan mag ma, mapuno ng tubig to. Ito mapuno ng tubig. Kadyan. Yan yung pinaka bottom. Yan yung magkaroon ng groundwater table na tinatawag. May tendency yan na magkaroon ng groundwater table kapag napapasukan ng tubig yung soil natin. And kakasabi ko nga lang kanina, if ever may water pa diyan, there that is an, actually an additional effect to the retaining wall kasi may may additional pressure na ini-impose yung water doon sa retaining wall in addition to the pressure that is being exerted by the earth di ba so kung additional yan syempre additional stress yan sa sa retaining wall natin and ayaw natin yun ayaw natin na magkaroon ng additional stress yung retaining wall natin and paano natin maiiwasan na magkaroon siya ng additional stress ang ginagawa natin dinaragyan natin ng drain hole dito nang sa ganun yung tubig na to hindi siya mag uh, ma store kumbaga ang mangyayari sa kanya ma-drain siya dito sa mga butas eh no. 'Di ba kung may tubig diyan? Ang tendency kung may drain hole ka diyan, tatagos yung tubig diyan. So, ang tendency hindi siya maiipon. Hindi siya maiipon dito. 'Di ba? So, kung hindi siya maiipon diyan, edi mag hindi magkakaroon ng additional additional pressure due to water pressure. So, hindi man hindi magkakaroon ng additional stress yung ano natin, yung yung retaining wall natin or yung abutment natin as uh, in general. So, yan yung purpose ng mga drain hole, yung mga putas-putas na nilalagay natin dyan sa sa mga retaining structures natin. Okay? So, that is just an additional information lang naman. Okay? So, if you want to find the corresponding provisions that pertain to earth pressure, you can refer to section 3.11 of, uh, of uh, AASHTO. LRFD 2012 because section 3.11 pertains to earth pressure. So that particular code provision is actually dedicated for the computation of earth pressure. So ang symbol natin that we usually use for earth pressure ay EH, ES, LS, and DD. Okay. So basahin ko lang yung section 3.11.1 ng ASH to. Uh, earth pressure shall be considered as a function of the type and unit weight of earth, water content, soil creep characteristics, degree of compaction, location of groundwater table, earth structure interaction, amount of surcharge, earthquake effects, box slope angle, and wall inclination, etc. So napakaraming uh, uh, factors that can affect the, the earth pressure. Okay, that is being uh, enumerated by the code. Okay, so sabi niya nga dito, yung earth pressure, magdito niyan, can be affected by the type and unit weight of the earth. Yung water content niya, soil creep, wall inclination, box slope angle, earthquake effect, etc. etc. Okay, so that is the, the corresponding provision for earth pressure. If you will refer to uh, Ashto. Uh, if you will refer to DGCS Volume 5, 2015, Section 10.15, uh, that is actually dedicated as well to earth pressure. You can see there that you can you can see there that there is a similar provision as this. So again, why similar? Simply because uh, our local code ad just adapted the international code. So you can see similar provision here. So sabi niya rin dito, earth pressure is actually a function of the type and density of earth, water content, etc., etc. Okay, so that is where uh, that is where you can refer if you want to compute for the the, the magnitude of earth pressure. Water pressure separate siya, naka separate, naka separate yung yung computation na water pressure. Okay, so other other permanent loads that we consider when we design uh, design. Uh, when we design <laughs> bridges, is what we call superimposed deformations. Okay, so additional uh, additional permanent load yan. So again, pansinin nyo, hindi siya hindi siya yung force talaga yung superimposed uh, yung superimposed uh, deformation. Hindi, hindi talaga siya force, but actually a deformation. Yan yung sinasabi ko kanina. When we say load, it's not actually limited to to forces or moments. Because the formations can still uh, affect our structure. It can still impose stress sa structure natin. Therefore, it is also considered as a load, yung mga deformations na yan. So, ano ba yung mga superimposed deformations na yan? 
uh, four continuous spans, any superimposed deformation will cause internal for internal forces in the superstructure and redistribution of reaction forces among various supports, so batmans and peers. Examples of such forces are this called are this caused by post tensioning, caused by shrinkage and creep, and forces caused by differential foundation settlements. So yung mga deformation na yan, that it's being experienced by our super uh, by our bridge uh, structure in general. Again, just like what I mentioned a while ago, may effect yan. May effect yan sa ano natin, sa, 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 sa bridge itself natin. Therefore, we have to consider them whenever we design bridges. So just to give you an overview, although later on we will just discuss more about deformations or superimposed deformation, but just to give you an overview about superimposed deformation and how it affects bridge elements, suppose we have a continuous bridge. So, familiar naman na kayo siguro sa continuous continuous bridge. So, ano siya? Uh, bridge siya na continuous. Kung baga, dire-direcho siya. Dire-direcho, just like what I discussed uh, last last time. Uh, bridge, bridge uh, continuous bridge is a bridge na continuous and dire-direcho siya. Hindi siya yung putol dito. Hindi siya composed of two segments, kundi yung one segment lang siya. Okay, so kunyari meron tayong bridge superstructure, uh, bridge, bridge like this, continuous bridge. Tapos, ang nangyari, for example lang ha, for example, nangyari, itong, itong substructure niya dito, for example lang, nagsettle. Kunyari, nagsettle siya. Ibig sabihin na nagsettle, uh, bumaba. Bumaba siya due to some ratio, or some reason, due to some reason. So, siguro, uh, nagkaroon ng liquefaction yung na, na nang hina yung ano yung yung supporting soil whatsoever so kung magsettle yan kunyari napunta siya dito sa ganitong level yan syempre if you can imagine since magkakatugtong yan magkakatugtong yang bridge yung superstructure tsaka yung abat uh, yung substructure since magkakatugtong yan ang tendency pag nagsettle tong part na to ang magiging itsura na ng bridge mo will be will be something like this. Parang ganito na yung magiging itsura ng bridge mo. Pag nagsettle yan, yung isang part niya. So anong mapapansin mo? Anong nangyari sa bridge natin nung nagsettle yung isang portion niya, yung isang foundation niya or isang sub, isang yung isang substructure? Niya. Kung mapapansin mo ang nangyari sa 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 bridge natin, nagbend siya. Nagbend siya like this. And alam naman natin, every time a material bends, nagkakaroon ng uh, compression part tsaka tension part tensile part okay so kung nagbend yan magkakaroon yan ng mag, makaka-experience yan ng tensile forces dito tensile stresses dito sa portion na to while compressive stresses naman dito sa sa bottom part na to okay so ano naman ano naman kung makakapag-produce ng tensile stresses yung settlement ng isang substructure so dun pa lang sa word na tensile stress medyo you have to uh, you, you you already know na may effect siya sa ano natin sa bridge natin especially kung concrete yung bridge natin eh. simply because we know that concrete is a uh, weak in resisting tensile stresses di ba so weak na nga siya sa resisting ng tensile stresses tapos nagproduce pa tayo ng tensile stress due to the settlement of the substructure okay so yung yung deformation na yan na naidulot ng settlement ng substructure natin is actually affected uh, affected the the bridge uh, uh, by by introducing tensile stresses okay tensile stresses na alam natin na hindi masyadong kayang resist ng concrete structure natin since since concrete nga siya since concrete is weak in resisting tensile stresses okay so Yung magnitude pa ng tensile stresses na yan is depende sa settlement nito. Pag sobra-sobra yung settlement, ibig sabihin, sobra-sobra yung deformation ng bridge element natin, ng superstructure natin. Ibig sabihin, sobra-sobra yung tensile stresses na generate niya. And kapag lumagpas yan sa capacity ng concrete uh, superstructure natin, there will be a tendency to, uh, there will be a tendency of failure. Siyempre, magkakarak muna. That will, uh, that will eventually uh, result to total failure. And we don't want that to happen in our bridge that that we designed diba so if you don't want that to happen to the bridge that we designed therefore we have to consider that whenever we design bridges we have to consider those deformations and mga deformations na yan, that can be uh, imposed to our bridge like the deformation that was caused by settlements okay because we know for a fact that those deformations 
like the deformation caused by settlement, can actually affect our bridge in this way. This is just a simple way to explain the, the effect of settlement or deformation to our bridge. It can cause tensile stresses. It can cause bending. It can cause that can cause uh, tensile stresses. That is uh, deteriorating to the capacity or to the strength of our uh, bridge. Okay, so therefore we have to consider that as well whenever we design uh, bridges. Okay, so that is actually a permanent uh, load as well. Uh, given the circumstance, circumstance na hindi na natin na ano to, hindi na natin na rehabil rehabilitate yung bridge natin. Ibig sabihin, nakaganto na talaga siya forever. Baga nakasettle na talaga yung isang foundation na dito. So that can be considered as permanent load. Kasi nga, permanent yung effect niya sa bridge. Kasi nga, permanent yung settlement. So forever na siya nakabenta ganyan. So forever na siya may tensile stress na ganito. Okay, so therefore, the effect of the superimposed deformation na to is actually permanent in nature. Therefore, it is included to the permanent load classification. Okay, so so much for so much for permanent loads. Let's now move on to the to the other uh, major classification or major type of load that we consider whenever we design bridges, which are the transient loads. So what do we mean? What do we mean when we say transient loads? Ano mga ibig sabihin ng transient? When we say transient or transient loads, those are loads that are placed on a bridge only for a short period of time. That's why it's called transient, di ba? Ano ba ibig sabihin ng transient? Di ba? Parang ano lang yan, short period of time lang yan. Parang pag ano, pag, pag uh, pupunta ka sa isang lugar, di ba magta-transient ka? Yung tinatawag nga niya, magta-transient ka. Uh, mag, Mag-re-rent ka ng hotel for some ano lang, short, short period of time lang kasi nga kailangan mo lang ng matitirahan. Diba? diba yung ibig sabihin ng transient? Yun lang din yung meaning dito sa, sa transient loads. When you say transient loads, these are just loads that are placed on a bridge for a, a short period of time lang. Kumbaga, hindi siya permanent. So, kumbaga, transient loads are just the opposite of permanent loads. Unlike permanent loads that will be remaining on our superstructure or that will be remaining our on our structure forever for a long uh, for uh, throughout the lifespan of the bridge unlike that transient loads uh, will just be existing on our bridge for a short period of time lang okay so so ano lang siya kumbaga nandiyan siya for a, for a period of time pero later on mawawala rin and then pwedeng bumalik din tapos pwedeng mawala ulit Mawala, bumalik, mawala. So, basta hindi siya permanent in nature. That is what we call transient loads. So, just like sa permanent loads, meron din siya mga major categories or major forms, yung mga transient loads natin. And uh, the first on the list, syempre, is the major transient load that we consider whenever we design bridges, which are the vehicular live load or live load in general. Okay? So, uh, alam naman natin live load it's actually a transient load kasi nga uh, hindi naman siya permanent in nature diba live loads are those uh, uh, loads kung naalala niyo sa previous discussions natin when we say when we say uh, when we say live loads uh, these are loads that are imposed on our bridge that are that has a uh, uh, variable magnitude as well as position so anything na variable yung magnitude at position na kinikerry ng bridge natin, they are already called live load. And we know for a fact that the vehicles that travel along our bridges are actually not uh, permanent in position. Kasi nga gumagalaw yan. Just like what you are seeing here sa, sa GIF natin. Diba yung mga yung mga vehicle na, na dumadaan sa bridge natin? Of course, gumagalaw sila. They, uh, they change in position, uh, although they, they don't uh, change in magnitude, but they still change in position. Therefore, we can still classify them as live load. And to be specific, they are called vehicular live load, simply because this live load uh, came from vehicles. That's why it's called vehicular live load, obviously. 
The term live load means a load that moves along the length of a span, which is modeled using hypothetical design vehicles based on truck loading. So yung mga vehicular live load na yan that we consider when we design bridges, uh, we usually represent them using what we call design vehicles that are usually based on truck loading. Okay. So kapag nagde-design tayo ng mga bridges, and we consider the vehicular live load. Hindi natin kino consider yung 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 weight ng ng truck ng ng ng, ng Nissan, ng Toyota. Hindi natin kino consider yung yung uh, particular weight ng uh, motorcycle na na Nmax or ng iba pang ano brand, di ba? We we don't specify particular uh, weight whenever we consider vehicular live load. Ang ginagawa natin Yung mga weight ng mga vehicles na yon, yung mga Nissan na truck, mga Toyota, mga Innova na sasakyan, yung mga weight na yon, instead of kunin natin yung particular weight nila, instead of doing that, we usually represent them using designed vehicles. Okay? Designed vehicles. Okay? For the, for the case of bridge design, usually yung designed vehicles natin is usually based on truck loading. Pero when we say design vehicles, guys, uh, ito yung mga vehicles that represents a particular class of vehicles. Kunyari, meron tayong de design vehicles for cars or for private cars. So meron siyang particular dimension, yung design vehicle na to with a particular weight. That can represent all of the cars na dumadaan dito sa particular bridge that we design. Okay, that is like that is an, an example of design vehicle. Meron din meron din tayong design vehicle uh, representing trucks. Okay? So yung design vehicle na truck na to, meron siyang syempre particular dimension and then particular weight. And itong truck na to, this can already represent all of the trucks na dumadaan dito sa bridge natin. So, meron tayong design vehicle for cars, sa trucks. Actually, meron din sa mga ano eh, sa mga bicycles at sa mga pedestrian. Okay. Although, di, hindi na vehicles yun pag sa pedestrian. Diba? Pero ito yung major na design vehicles na ginagamit natin. Yung mga, mga for cars at trucks. Okay. So, usually yan yung ginagamit natin for the design of highway in general. Pero since we are particularly designing bridges, uh, the design vehicle that we usually use for the design of uh, bridges is usually based on truck loading simply because mas mabigat nga kasi yung truck. Diba? Katulad na ng kanina ako binabanggit bakit truck loading yung ginagamit natin uh, na in-anticipate natin na dadaan sa sa bridge natin simply because mabigat nga yung truck. Siya yung pinamabigat among the different vehicles. Diba? So, might as well, siya na lang yung consider natin whenever we design uh, bridges. Dapat yung bridge natin can withstand the weight of a particular truck with this multitude of weight and dimension. Okay. So, yan. Katulad nito. Ito yung, this is just one of one example of the design truck na, na ginagamit natin in designing bridges. So, yung design truck na to, the, the dimensions, Yung dimensions nitong truck na to na uh, is actually specified on the code sa ASHTO at sa DGCS. So when when I say dimensions, isipin ko noon ito. Ano yung distance nitong front wheel sa sa wheel na to, tapos ano yung distance dito sa wheel na to. So yan yung ibig ko sabihin when, when I say dimensions as well as yung mismong dimension din ng ano. Although hindi man tayo particular sa dimension talaga ng ano ng ng truck. Ang particular tayo is yung distances ng mga wheels from each other. So usually that is what I meant when I say dimension, yung mga distances ng mga wheels niya. Ano yung haba, ano yung ano yung distance na yan, ano yung distance na yan. Tapos pag tinitingnan mo siya sa rear view, di ba ang itsura niya sa weird sa rear view, something like this. So, ito yung gulong niya, tapos ito yung isa pang niyang gulong. Yung, yung, yung distances between them, that is also what we meant when we say dimension. Dimension ng design truck. So, there is a particular uh, dimensions of this particular truck that we usually use as our design vehicle when we, whenever we design bridges. And yung mga dimensions na yan, and in addition is, to that is the the weight of the truck. Yung mga yon yung mga bagay na yon you can find them sa, sa mga code. Okay, sa mga, uh, sa mga code provisions. 
Okay. Especially sa Ashta at sa BGCS. So, yun, so historically, uh, bigyan ko lang kayo ng background sa transition ng mga vehicular live load that we have used through the years. Before, ang ginagamit natin na, na design vehicle or truck loading is the AASO 1935 train of trucks uh, loading. So, pansinin niyo yung, ano, pansinin niyo yung uh, term ko dito, AASO. Baka uh, some of you might think that this, this is an, an error. Okay, some of you might think, might think that this is an error, but this is not an error, guys. Hindi hindi ako nagkulang ng TD dito. Kasi yung aashto, aashto. Uh, yung aashto na yan, guys. Before, hindi talaga aashto yan. Walang tiyan dati. Walang tiyan dati. Ang tawag diyan dati sa organization na yan is aasho lang, aasho. Uh, American Association of State Highway Officials. Parang ganun. Tama ba? Uh, Ashton. American Association of State Highways. Uh, uh, transportation Official. Okay. Wala pa siyang T dati. Wala pa siya nung transportation na term. Uh, I think namanggit ko rin pala to before sa previous modules natin. Bakit wala pa siyang T before yung transportation. Diba? Dati wala siyang transportation, tapos nilagyan siya ng transportation na, na term to to signify that this organization is the governing organization for the design of all the modes of transportation. Whether it's a air, water, land, or railway mode of transportation. Okay, so before, yung truck loading or design truck na ginagamit natin is the, was the AHASMO 1935 train of trucks loading. So, ganito yung itsura niya. Okay? So, ang ginagawa natin doon, kapag nagde-design tayo ng mga bridges, nasa na yung aking cursor, yun. Before, pag nagde-design tayo ng mga bridges like this, bridge, like that, like that. Pag nagde-design tayo ng mga bridges like that, ang ginagawa natin doon, we, we anticipate na may dadaan sa kanya ng mga uh, train of trucks like this. Train of trucks, ibig sabihin magkakasunod na truck. Yan. Inanticipate natin na yung bridge na dinidesign natin, may mga trucks na dadaan, which are this, with the particular dimensions given here, 14 feet yung distance ng ano, ng front wheel sa rear wheel. Tapos, ang distances ng mga truck from each other ay 30 feet. Tapos, ang mga wheel load nila, ibig sabihin yung load na kinikerry ng mga wheel nila ay 600 pound, tapos 2,400 pound dito sa unang truck, tapos sa susunod 8,000, tapos 32,000, tapos yung susunod 6,000, tapos 2,000, uh, 24,000, tapos and so on and so forth. Okay. So, in, in other words, uh, we assume na may dadaan na 15 ton tsaka 20 ton trucks. Train of 15 and 20 ton trucks dito sa uh, sa bridge na dinidesign natin. Okay. So, yun yung inanticipate natin the load before, whenever we design bridges. Dapat yung bridge natin uh, can withstand train of trucks like this. Pag kahit may dumaan ng mga trucks na 15 ton, 20 ton, 15 ton, 20 ton uh, na may mga ganitong distances and dimensions, dapat yung bridge natin will, will be able to resist the stresses that will be generated by this train of trucks. Okay? If we will use this uh, loading, yung H2035 loading, okay? If we will use that uh, particular loading in designing these bridges or this bridge, okay? We also have other train of truck configuration, which is this. This is what we call the H1535 loading. So, ano yung pinagkaiba ng H1535 loading sa H2035 loading? So, obvious naman dito sa figure kung ano yung pinagkaiba nila. Uh, kanina 15 ton, ngayon 11.25 na lang. Kanina 20 ton, ngayon 15 ton na lang. Okay? So, yun yung, yung, yun yung main difference. Yun yung main difference with with them. Yung, yung H15 tsaka yung H20. Actually, yung pangalan nila, H20, ibig sabihin ng 20, 20 ton. Diba? Dito, H15, ibig sabihin 15 ton. Okay, 15 tons. Yan yung ibig sabihin yan eh. Yung 35, yung dash 35, ang ibig sabihin lang nun is yung 1935. 
kasi nga itong mga mga loadings na to yung trucks loading na to uh, were formulated way back 1935 that's why dash 35 yung makikita niyo dito so yun yung ibig sabihin ng pangalan nitong mga particular truck loading na to okay so before yan yung ginagamit whenever we design uh, whenever, whenever we design bridges the bridge must withstand the stresses that will be those by train of trucks that will be traversing it Okay, so yung mga stresses that will be produced na itong mga sunod-sunod na truck na dadaan dito sa bridge natin at a distance 30 feet from each other, dapat mawi withstand itong bridge natin for us to be able to say na okay yung performance ng bridge natin, adequate yung strength niya. Okay, so that was before and then after some time, after nine years, there are additional uh, truck classes that were uh, introduce in addition to this train of truck loading. Ah. Kasi before, dalawa lang yung ano niya, class niya. Eh. H20 lang, tsaka H15 loading lang. Dalawa lang. Before, noong, noong 1935. Noong 1935, dalawa lang. H20 lang, tsaka H15. And then, pagdating ng taong 1944, uh, Aasho uh, added five additional truck classes, which are uh, H10, H15, H20, HS15, tsaka HS20. Okay? So, in addition to H2035, tsaka H1535, meron na ring H1044, H1544, and so on and so forth. So, bakit may 44 dito na nakalagay? Bakit may 44 dyan? Kasi nga, they are uh, uh, made way back 1944. Okay? So, yun yung ibig sabihin na. So ano yung anong nangyari diyan sa five additional truck classes na yan? So ang nangyari lang diyan, uh, in addition to this uh, corresponding configuration, meron ka ding uh, additional truck classes wherein yung mga kinikerry niya naman ay uh, 10 tons, tapos yung isa 15 tons, 20 tons, tapos yung HS, HS is actually a tandem ano. Tandem class of truck. Sabi nung ano nung tandem. Yun yung pinakita ko kanina sa inyo na ano, na truck. Yung may yung may katandem siya na ano na nagulong. Eh no may katandem siya na gulong. Yeah, tandem sila. Yeah, dapat tawag natin na tandem truck. Kaya itsura ng mga HS. Yung mga may S dito. Yung mga may H lang, ganito lang itsura ng ng mga truck niya. Yung simpleng truck lang, yung apat lang yung gulong. Yung mga HS, yung mga ganito. May mga tandem axle na siya diyan. Okay. So ganun ulit same same as this, dapat yung pitch natin pag may dumaan na mga train of trucks, na ganito yung mga weight naman in addition to this or kung tandem kung ganito man siya may tandem axle man na dadaan sa kanya, dapat ma-reweight na niya yung mga ma-generate na stresses. <coughs> okay. And then after that, after those two truck loadings, uh, after na ma-form yung ashto, nung naging ashto na siya, ang naging truck loadings na natin ay yung mga tinatawag natin na standard H and HS design trucks. Which are this? Okay? So, ito yung mga tinatawag natin na ito yung H trucks, ito yung HS trucks. So, makikita nyo naman yung main difference between H trucks. Ganito lang yung gulong niyan. Sa gulong niyan, nagkakaiba yung dalawang yan. Ganyan yung H trucks. Ito yung HS. Yan. Meron siyang tandem truck dito. Parang tandem yung ano niya. Yung, yung axle. Or ano ba tawag dyan? I don't know if tandem yung tawag niya dyan. Or hindi, hindi pa tandem yata. Although ganyan yung itsura ng uh, HS tsaka ng H. So ganun ulit. Merong particular dimension yung H tsaka HS. Ito, 14 feet for H. Tapos sa uh, HS, ito, 14 feet daw yung distance between the front tsaka yung susunod na axle. Tapos yung distance between this tsaka this varies, actually. It varies. So it varies uh, from uh, from a length of, nakalagay ba dito? Ito. It varies from a length of 14 feet to 30 feet. So itong distance na to tsaka dito, it varies from 14 feet to 30 feet. Okay. Tapos, 
sa sa pagtitingnan mo sila sa rear view, ito yung distance ng mga wheel niya for each truck 6 feet for HS trucks 6 feet pa rin naman parehas lang din naman. Okay? So uh, ang nangyari na uh, ganun ulit yung bridge natin if ever may dadaan sa kanya na mga trucks. So hindi na siya actually train of trucks. So kung kanina, kung before 1935 and 1944, train of trucks yung yung anticipate natin na dadaan sa sa bridge natin. Pagdating dito sa Ashto Standard H and HS design trucks, hindi na siya hindi na siya ano, kumbaga technically train of trucks. Kumbaga kahit single truck na lang siya. Kahit single H or HS truck na lang yung dadaan sa kanya. Yun na lang yung inanticipate natin na dadaan sa bridge natin. And yung produce nila na stresses, dapat our bridge will be able to stand, to withstand those stresses that will be generated if ever there will be a single H track or HS track that will travel, that will tra that will travel along our bridge. Okay. Uh, to load a structure, one such truck per lane, per span is used. The truck is uh, then moved along the length of the span to determine the point of maximum movement. So how, how do we consider these uh, trucks whenever we design a, a bridge? So balikan ko lang ulit yung, yung, yung bridge kanina. Ito yung bridge. Single span bridge na lang. Single span bridge. So, meron tayong bridge, single span. Ibig sabihin, isa lang yung span niya. Ayun, no? isa lang, one lang. One, single span. So, how do we impose uh, these bridges? Especially this, yung uh, standard H and HS design truck sa, sa bridge natin. Ang ginagawa natin, di ba pag tinignan mo yung bridge natin sa top view, ganito yung tura niya. Usually, ang mga daan, mga highway, mga bridges, di ba may two-way yan? Usually, may dalawang lane yan. Although it varies, depende kung ilan yung lane. Pwedeng apat yung lane, anim na lane, walong lane, etc. Pero yung pinakasimpleng ano natin, bridge is composed of two lanes. Yung isa papunta doon, tapos yung isa papunta dito. Okay. So ang ginagawa natin dyan, kapag ina-analyze natin yung bridge using kunyari yung standard H&HS design trucks, ang ginagawa natin dyan, naglalagay tayo ng one such truck, either isang H, or isang HS, or isang train of loading na to dito sa isang lane na to. Okay? Naglalagay tayo ng either nito or isa nito, or isa nito, dito sa isang lane. So, kung may dalawang lane, ibig sabihin, dalawang ganito yung dadaan dyan. Dalawang series netong train of truck, or dalawang, dalawang uh, H or HS truck. Separately, ah. Separately, ah. Separate yung separate yan na ginagamit. Kung ito yung ginamit mo, edi maglalagay ka ng train of trucks ng pagganyan along this direction, tapos along this direction. Tapos kung H truck lang yung ginamit mo, edi maglalagay ka ng single H truck dito, tsaka single H truck dito. Kung HS truck yung ginamit mo, maglalagay ka ng single HS truck papunta doon, tsaka papunta dito. And then, uh, you will move them. You will move them along the span of the bridge. Imove mo yan, yung mga, yung mga design trucks na yan, along the span of the bridge. And then, uh, alam naman natin, kapag yung load ay nagmo-move along the, the, the structure, the, there will be a corresponding change of stress. This is actually an, an application of uh, moving load. Kung naalala nyo sa mechanics of the warmable bodies or sa structural theory, di ba meron tayong topic doon na ano, all about moving loads, kunyari simply supported beam. Support, simply supported beam, tapos meron kang... Uh, in-apply na load dito, ang inahanap, kunyari, saan mo ipoposition yan in such a way that there will be a maximum shear, kunyari, that will occur on this particular point, maximum shear or moment. Diba? May ganun tayong problem sa structural theory, di ba? So, itong sinasabi ko ngayon, that is actually an application of moving load or influence line. Yan, influence line is also related to moving load, di ba? So, yung mga yun, moving load and influence line, that is actually an application. Or this is actually an application of those topics that we have studied from structural theory. Okay. So, we will move this truck along the span and then we will just have to know the, the, the maximum moment or shear that can be generated along this particular single span bridge when you move this particular uh, design truck. 
that you will choose. Whether ito yung i-choose mo, or ito yung gamitin mo, or ito yung gamitin mo. <coughs> okay, so either of them, just have to move them along the along the bridge, and then get the corresponding maximum shear or moment that will be generated as you move those trucks along the bridge. Uh, along the bridge, and then that is the corresponding uh, shear and moment forces or uh, shear and moment shear forces or moments that you will use on the design of this particular bridge. Okay, so that is how you can load uh, this uh, vehicular live loads in a bridge, given a single span lang siya given the single span lang siya. Kung marami siyang span, edi maraming ganito yung gagawin mo. Okay? Kasi nga, you have to apply those trucks per lane, per span. Okay? Per lane, per span. So, one span, meron kang ganito. One lane, meron kang ganito, mga trucks. Okay? So, when placing those vehicular live loads uh, in traffic lanes, there is actually a particular provision from Ashto on how to place those uh, live loads sa, sa bawat lane ng bridge na dinidesign natin. And you can actually find that sa section from live loads, which is section 3.6. Okay? Specifically sa section 3.6.1.1.1 which uh, pertains to the number of design, lane, design lanes. Okay, so yung design lanes na sinasabi dyan is yung, yung lane na binanggit ko kanina. Diba? So, kunyari, ito yung whole, ito yung top view ng bridge natin. Tapos meron lang kunyari dalawang lane. Okay, yung dalawang lane na yan, uh, actually that's a minimum. Although minsan kasi, diba, meron bridges na single lane lang siya. Or one way lang siya. Ibig sabihin, pagunta lang doon sa isang direction. Although usually dalawang lane, minimum dalawang lane usually para meron kang lane na papunta doon, tsaka papunta dito, pabalik. So yung number of design lanes na yan, yung isang lane na yan, yan yung tinatawag natin na design lane yan. Yung number niyan is actually uh, dependent based on this particular code provision. Okay? So nakadepende yan actually sa, ano, sa, sa width. Sa width ng bridge. Ito, basahin ko lang yung particular provision for ano for the for the number of the design lanes generally the number of design lanes should be determined by taking the integer part of the ratio w over 12 where w is the clear roadway width in fit between curves and or barriers kasi di ba ganito yung tsura usually ng ano ng mga mga bridges uh, cross section ah so ito yung mismong deck and then, usually may mga bridge barrier ka dyan, di ba? Usually may mga bridge barrier ka dyan. Tapos, nandito yung mga truck. Dadaan dito, so mga dadaan doon. Okay. So, yung sinasabi natin na width dyan, yung W, eto yan. Ito yung width W yung sinasabi dyan. So, yung width daw nyan, no mismong width ng bridge natin, divide mo sa 12, wherein yung W dapat nakafit ha? Yung lalabas daw dyan na integer part. Kunyari, uh, 25 yung width ng ano natin, ng bridge natin. Divide mo yan sa 12, it will be equal to 2 point, ilan? 2 point something. 2 point something, ba? So yung integer part daw na yan, yung, yung whole number ba? Yung whole number. That must be the minimum number of design lanes that will be required to have for this particular bridge with, with this particular width, which is 25 feet. Ibig sabihin lang yan, dapat at least meron siyang dalawang design lane. Ibig sabihin, dapat meron siyang dalawang lane at least. Like this. Okay? If yung width niya is 25 feet lang. Ha. Okay? That is what we meant here sa particular provision na to. Possible future changes in the physical or functional clear roadway width of the bridge should be considered. Kasi minsan, di ba, nagkakaroon tayo ng road widening na tinatawag. Although sa, sa bridge, ginagawa rin naman natin yun sa, yung road widening sa bridge. Ginagawa natin, dinudugtungan natin to ng panibagong uh, bridge width dito. Yan. So, ano to, uh, minsan binabaklas pa to, minsan in-stay na lang. Pero ang ginagawa lang natin dyan, kung ito yung original bridge, tapos gusto natin gawan siya ng road widening, so magtatabi lang tayo dyan ng another bridge. Nang sa ganun, parang kumbaga lumaki yung width ng ano natin, para lumaki yung width ng bridge natin. Ginagawa yan, ginagawa yan yung road widening natin natawag, or bridge, bridge widening. So if ever na there is a possibility of road widening, 
there's a possibility of your future changes in the in the roadway with dapat i-consider din natin yan guys whenever we compute for the number of design lanes according to the code eh no sabi niya dito possible future changes must be considered should be considered okay in cases where the traffic lanes are less than 12 feet uh, wide the number of design lanes shall be equal to the number of traffic lanes uh, uh, and the width of the design lane shall be taken as the width of the traffic lane. Roadway widths from 20 to 24 feet shall have two design lanes, each, each equal to one half of the roadway width, <coughs> and so on and so forth. So you can see here, yung mga particular provision na binabanggit ni Nicole for the option for the choice of a number of design lane so sabi niya nga dito uh, kung yung roadway width mo nasa 20 to 24 feet dapat minimum there are two design lanes minimum na yun so bawal maging magkaroon ng isang design lane lang dapat dalawa minimum okay tapos yung width ng dalawang design lane na yun dapat kalahati kalahati kung ito yung roadway mo dapat yung yung width niya ng isang design lane kalahati equally test kumbaga equally distributed sila okay and so on and uh, and so forth so may kita nyo dito sa commentary ng provision na yan sabi niya dito it is not the intention of this article to promote bridges with narrow traffic lanes wherever possible bridges should be built to accommodate the standard design lane and appropriate uh, shoulder so nakikita nyo na naman nagkaroon lang nagkaroon lang siya ng comment about this provision here so, ganun yung pagbasa niyan, guys. Mapapansin nyo yung commentary. Minsan may space siya dito. Ayan, no? Dali, burahin ko yung ano. Burahin ko lang to. Ayan, no? May space siya, diba? May kita mo, ba't, ba't dito niya pa kaya sinulat? Ba't hindi na lang dito banda? Kasi, itong, itong particular commentary niya na to, actually pertains dito. Yung katapat niya. Katapat niya na, na provision. So, dito siya talaga naka-pertain. Hindi sa buong to. So, wala siyang kinalaman dito. Dito siya may kinalaman. Kaya diyan siya pinantay. May kita niyo diyan siya pinantay oh, nung, nung, nung mismong code natin. Okay, so ganun yung pagbasa niyan guys sa ah. pagbasa ng commentary. May kita mo by space diyan. Dito siya nakalagay. So ibig sabihin lang yan, dito siya nagpa-property doon sa katapat niya na code provision. Okay? Ah, uh, ito may kadugtong pa yan. May kadugtong pa yang uh, 3.6.1.1 na yan, yung multiple uh, presence of live load. So, ano bang binabanggit diyan? Actually, ang dami siyang sinasabi diyan. Usually, ang dami siyang sabi sa code. Pero parang binabanggit niya lang naman diyan sa multiple uh, presence uh, provision na yan. Ah, uh, basta sabi niya, dapat balik ang basahin ko lang. Medyo maliit eh, hindi ko mabasa. Uh, provisions of the article shall not be applied to the fatigue limits, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the specified otherwise here in the extreme life load force effect shall be determined by considering each possible combination of number of loaded lanes uh, multiplied by a corresponding uh, multiple presence factor to account for the probability of simultaneous lane occupation by the full HL93 design. So later on, makikita nyo yung HL93 na yan. Aha, aha. So, ang binabanggit lang dito sa particular provision na to is yung instances wherein, kunyari, ito yung design lane natin. So, ba yung ano ko ito? Top view ng bridge natin, tapos nahati sa gitna. May, desa, may dalawang design lane ka, kunyari, mapunta doon, tsaka dito. Kasi di ba merong tendency minsan na Nandito yung truck mo, tapos nandito rin yung truck mo. Kumbaga, in a single portion of the bridge, there are multiple trucks present. ba? May mga ganyang instances eh. Okay? So, may, meron yung additional effect eh sa, sa bridge natin eh. Which is accounted by this particular provision, yung, yung pag-multiply nga ng live load sa tinatawag natin na multiple presence factor which can be found here on this particular table. Okay? So yung yung ganyang scenario where in there there are multiple uh, presence of truck loading on a particular segment of the bridge which uh, generates additional effect to the bridge we consider that additional effect by multiplying the live load by the multiple presence factor that are enumerated here usually yan ang naman yung 
ibig sabihin niya. Okay? And then, makikita nyo dito, corresponding to that particular provision, ang dami niyang sinabi, may marami siyang commentary about that particular provision. So, ang hinabanggit niya lang naman dyan ay additional information about the the history about the kumbaga background background of this particular provision yun lang binabanggit yan sa commentary na yan so might as well basahin niyo yan it's very useful to read those commentaries kasi you you will have uh, a background of the kumbaga history of the particular provision kung bakit ba nagkaroon ng ganong provision ano ba yung history niya ano ba yung additional information about that provision, etc., etc. Okay? So, might as well, uh, read lang, pakiread na lang yan, siguro. Pakibasa na lang yung, yung commentary na yun, yung part na, na part ng code. Okay? So, that's that's the uh, ash to code, guys. Uh, that's the ash to code. If you will refer to DGS, DGCS, you have to go to section, you have to go to section, 10.7. So that is the corresponding section that pertains to live loads. So if you will go there, specifically for section 10.7.2.1, number of design lanes, you will just see similar provision as what we have read a while ago. Okay, malulux familiar ka lang dyan, kasi nga, we just have adapted the international code provisions. Okay, ang pinagkaiba lang yan, 3.6, 67.2. Naka SI lang, guys. So yung 12 kanina, yung 12 feet, 12 feet ba yan? Yung 12 kanina, uh, uh, ju we just converted that into its, its corresponding uh, SI. Its corresponding SI uh, unit. Okay? So, tama ba? 3.6 is equivalent to 12. I don't know if... Uh, uh, equivalent yan, but ganun, dan, ganun lang naman usually yung ginagawa. Yung nasa S, yung nasa U, uh, ash to, we just convert it to corresponding SI. <coughs> okay, ito, katulad nito kanina. Ito, ano to, eh? 20, 20 feet to, di ba kanina? 20 feet to 24 feet. Okay. 7.2 divided by 2. So, tama, 12 feet to siguro. Yung 3.6 meters. 3.6 meters. <coughs> Okay. Then ito yung kasunod niya, yung sa uh, multiple presence of live uh, multiple multiple presence of live load, uh, same provision lang din naman as what we have read a while ago. Same uh, same table actually. Yeah. So, ano lang yung naging disadvantage ng DGCS? Siguro because uh, it doesn't have the commentary. Siguro. Although Okay lang naman kahit wala yung commentary kasi it's not actually part of the provision. It's not actually part of the code. Pero yun nga, uh, since uh, it uh, it brings additional information about the code provision, might as well, di ba? It, 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 will, uh, it will contribute something to the reader of the code. Di ba? Although it's okay lang naman. Depende lang naman sa gumawa na, ng code. Okay? So, so much for the standard uh, H and HS uh, truck loading that we have discussed a while ago. Uh, after that, there is uh, another set of loading that the Ashto formulated. So before, uh, mostly most of the load nakadepende sa truck loading. Before. Ngayon, after that, after some time, nagpalit siya Ashto, Ang ginawa niya, instead of truck loading, ang ginawa niya is nag-base siya sa lane loading. Ito. So, nagkaroon na naman ng panibagong vehicular life load provision from Ashto. So, nagkaroon siya ng ganitong provision that uh, pertains to the standard H and HS lane loading. So, medyo nag-focus siya ngayon sa lane loading. So, ano yung ginagawa ngayon dyan sa lane loading na yan? So, instead of yung mismong mga truck, yung pinapadaan mo sa ano, Sa, sa bridge mo. Kanyari, ito yung bridge na design mo. Yan, bridge. So, instead of yung mga mismong truck, yung dadaan dyan, with the corresponding weights from the wheel. So, instead of that, ito na yung naging mismong load na consider natin 
sa pag-design nitong bridge na to. So we consider a combination of a concentrated load with a magnitude 18 uh, 18,000 pound for moment, 26,000 for shear. And in addition to that, we apply also a uniform load of 640 pound per linear foot of load. Na lane load. Okay? For HS2044 tsaka HS for H2044 tsaka HS2044 loading. Okay? So kung naalala niyo yung HS2044 kanina, so balikan ko lang sa kanina. Ganito yung itsura ng HS2044 loading kanina. Ganito. Train na yun. Uh, train of truck siya. Train of truck siya for this uh, uh, 1935 provision. And then naging ganito siya yung itsura niya for this particular uh, AASH to provision. So after that, ang naging itsura niya na ay lane loading katulad na ito. Combination of lane loading tsaka ng concentrated load. Okay. So yung concentrated load, ito na yung nagre-represent sa effect no truck na dumadaan on this particular span of the bridge. Okay. Yan na yung nagre-represent dito sa effect ng truck na dumadaan sa bridge natin. And then, in addition to that, meron pa tayong ina-add na uniform load that can uh, 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 actually represent the, the, also the effect of the, the truck. Or in addition to that, yung uniform load that will be carried uh, due, to the, due to the truck na nagtatravel dito sa ano natin sa sa bridge natin. So kumbaga, ang nangyari, instead of ito yung bridge mo, tapos may truck na dadaan dyan, na may weight, tapos yung weight is being transferred to the bridge using the wheel loads. So instead of ganito yung itsura ng loading mo dun sa bridge mo, ganito na yung magiging itsura niya. So ito, to represent this uh, loading, uh, this loading is uh, represented by a combination of concentrated load and a lead loading. Okay, so ganyan na yung nangyari when the ash to change its uh, uh, truck loading from here to here. So baga sabi niya ash to, instead of ito ganitong load yung i-consider natin na dadaan sa bridge natin, why not ang i-consider natin is a combination of a lane loading like this and a concentrated load, single concentrated load for HS20 and uh, H2044 loading. Sa H1544 tsaka HS1544, ganito rin, Sim similar din. Combination of concentrated load and lane load. nag lang ng magnitude, obviously, kasi nga H15 na siya, tsaka HS15 na siya. So, 13.5 for moment, 19.5 for shear na siya. And then, yung uniform load niya, uh, 480 pound per linear foot na. So, yan na yung ikaw-carry ng bridge na. Then, instead of these two concentrated loads coming from the truck, that is uh, transferred to the deck, load sa bridge na din design natin. Okay, so ang ginagawa niya, ayun nga, nabanggit ko nga, uh, that new configuration na pa-ash to loading approximates a 40 kip or 178 kN truck followed by a trade of 30 kip or 133 kN trucks. So ayun nga, instead of, instead of train of loading, uh, uh, train of trucks, yan, so maraming trucks yan. Instead yung mga ganyan yung dadaan sa Sa, sa bridge natin, ang ginawa ni Ash to, instead of ganyan, ginawa niya ganito na lang. So, it will be a combination of a concentrated load at a uniform load to represent the effect of this same loading, same uh, loading composed of train of trucks. Okay, so binago ni Ash to yan. Pabago-bago ng isip si, Ana, si Ash to. So, same way, same way sa so ginawa natin kanina kung paano ilo-load yan sa, sa bridge na dinidesign natin. So, uh, you, have, you, all, you have to load that concentrated and lane load, uniform load, per lane, per span, katulad nung kanina. And then, you have to move this concentrated load along the span of the bridge and then find the maximum shear and moment. Okay. So, yung maximum shear and moment na yun, doon ka magbe-base ng design mo for this particular bridge. So same same way kung paano natin in-apply yung load sa sa ganitong loading kanina. Apply that to a single uh, uh for for uh, apply that per lane per span. So again, take note per lane per span yan ha. So kung may dalawang lane, so may dalawang ganito dapat. May dalawang ganito dapat. Okay? Per span. So ito, per span na ganito. 
then find the maximum uh, share moment that, that, that they can generate kung kung ano yung kaya mo generate na maximum share moment itong concentrated combination of concentrated load and late load compute mo lang yun and then doon ka mag paste na design na uh, design load mo okay 